have been doing their part to get voters pumped in 15 states in America, Samoa, with roughly a third of the delegates in the presidential race for both parties up for grabs. Our live team coverage, Your Voice, Your Vote 2024, begins with KSL News Radio's Becky Bruce at the elections desk. Becky? Tim, voters will cast ballots from Maine to Alaska. On Rumble last night, former President Donald Trump saying, you cannot underscore the importance of today. It's so important because we have to send a signal. You know, November 5th is going to be, I think, the most important day in the history of our country because that's the election. And we're going to take our country back. Of course, here in Utah, we are just one slice of the Super Tuesday pie. Democrats head to the polls today, but Republicans will hold caucus meetings to choose their presidential pick. Our live team coverage continues with KSL News Radio's Amy Kobabe. It's all about dialogue, according to GOP Chair Robert Axon. The caucus meeting is only there to facilitate the conversations that come from all of our citizens and the opinions that come from all of our Republican citizens here in Utah. But it's not just the opportunity to debate. Everyone who goes tonight will take part in a presidential preference poll so Republicans can choose between former President Trump and Nikki Haley, and national delegates will use that then to inform their decision at the upcoming convention. Locations for all parties caucusing tonight are listed on our website at kslnewsradio.com. Amy Kobabe, KSL News Radio. KSL's top national stories this hour. Former President Donald Trump appears to be close to sealing the deal for a third Republican nomination. But Nikki Haley says don't count her out just yet. At a rally in Texas last night, Haley insisted she's the only Republican who can beat President Biden. Republicans lost a vote on Mayorkas. They lost a vote on Israel. The RNC chair lost her job. And Donald Trump had his fingerprints on all of it. At some point, maybe we should say the reason that America keeps losing is because of Donald Trump. It remains unclear what Haley will do next. She has no public events scheduled today, not even an election night party. She's expected to watch tonight's results privately at home. That's ABC's Ike Jachi. An abortion pill case launches in the Supreme Court later this month, and Utah's Attorney General is one of the people urging justices to uh, close access to the pill. KSL News Radio's Peter Johnston is live with the details. Peter? Tim, Sean Reyes and 21 other attorneys general are arguing in a friend of the court brief that the Food and Drug Administration has overstepped when it approved the abortion pill Mifepristone. The core of their argument is that federal agencies like the FDA inherently threaten the U.S. Constitution's balance of powers and the ability of states to set their own rules. In this case, they argue the court should challenge the agency's ability to act on abortion pill access. That's just one of a blizzard of briefs, though, coming from members of Congress and other attorneys general. Justices will start hearing oral arguments on March 26th. Reporting live, Peter Johnston, KSL News Radio. A birth control medication that's been on the market for decades is about to become available over the counter. The company that makes O Pill per, uh, Perigo says it should hit stores later this month. ABC's Sony Salzman says. It's uh, being viewed as a game changer for women's health. The idea here is that by making this medication available over the counter, it will be easier for people to get and that many more people will be able to start taking birth control. And that could be really impactful for people who, for whatever reason, um, are kind of stumped by that barrier of getting a prescription. So the idea is to expand access here and expand access dramatically. The FDA uh, uh, declared last summer that O-Pill is safe and effective for use without a prescription. Roads in pretty good shape this morning. Let's get a first look traffic and say good morning to Andy Farnsworth. And the roads are dry, and so that's good news as we start off without any delay through the Salt Lake Valley on the freeways. It's a bit heavy on a few intersections on Mountain View. Have a little bit of a northbound stretch of heavy traffic, I-15, going up into Kaysville between Farmington and Kaysville, but it's a really small stretch. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. Two weeks after a cyber attack hit the nation's largest health insurer, experts say it appears a United Health Group may have paid the hackers $22 million in ransom. United Health has not confirmed the payment, reported by Reuters and Wired, but cybersecurity expert Scott Spiro says with Bitcoin, everything's out in the open. The uh, smoking gun, so to speak, was a publicly visible $22 million transaction on Bitcoin's blockchain. Spiro says paying ransom might seem like a quick fix, but in the long run, it's more likely to encourage bad actors. A Sanpete woman is charged with defrauding Medicaid out of nearly $13 million. Investigators say Lillian Smiskey 
uh, submitted more than 500 fraudulent Medicaid claims between March of 2019 and June of 2022. She oversaw operations for a clinic in Mount Pleasant during that time. She's facing multiple charges, including tax evasion and public assistance fraud. A new program in Ogden is hoping to help food service startups. KSL News Radio's Michael Commit is live with that story this morning. Michael? Tim, this is actually pretty neat. So you'll recall how James Madison Elementary has been closed. Well, now it'll be back in action as the site of a new kitchen incubator program called O-Town Kitchen, Ogden's first shared kitchen space. Interested businesses can join a wait list to use the school's kitchen, and this can come with educational resources from Weber State as well. When open, the program will work with businesses to produce packaged, canned, baked, and other goods, along with some sweeter stuff as well. That'll happen all in the next few weeks. Reporting live, Michael Commit, KSL News Radio. A cluster of earthquakes has been detected north of Milford. There have been more than 500 of them in two weeks. KSL News Radio's Heather Peterson explains why. Scientists from the University of Utah Seismograph Station say these earthquakes are being caused by the drilling for geothermal energy production. All of the earthquakes are being measured at or below a 2.7 magnitude, and scientists say they are small enough that people can't feel them. Scientists claim there is no cause for concern and the earthquakes are not expected to get any bigger. Uh, Hopefully the delays aren't going to get any bigger out there on the roads this morning, but just in case uh, they do, we'll keep an eye on traffic and weather together coming up on the 9s. Spend time with KSL News Radio and get a deeper understanding of the world around us. I do listen to KSL so much because you've got voices like Boyd Matheson. I listen to him every day. You can trust him. Inside Sources, weekdays 1 to 3 on KSL News Radio. Without the ones like you who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional grade industrial supplies. Count on real time product availability and fast delivery. Call clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Attorney Joe Cordell. Business owners and professionals face special challenges in divorce court. In addition to everything else going on, they have to contend with allegations that they are earning more than they are, coupled with claims on their business or practice itself. Clients with assets depend on their divorce lawyer skills in these matters, and that's why it's so important to hire someone that has those skills. Offices in Midvale and Clearfield, 1412 South Legend Hills Drive, Suite 200, Clearfield, Utah, 84015. Online at CordellCordell.com. Jeff Kaplan. When you're online, that's sometimes a source of fourth-hand information. Somebody does the reporting. Another website Googles. They find it. They rewrite it. And by the time you read it, you know the old game telephone. But KSL is a source of primary information. We have reporters on the street. They're out in the field finding out the details. And the difference between online and KSL News Radio, night and day. Jeff Kaplan's Afternoon News, 3 to 7 on KSL News Radio. It is Super Tuesday today, and of course, everybody knows that uh, 15 states, one territory, are going to be hosting presidential primary elections, including Utah. But this uh, may not be on your radar, that uh, there's also uh, the opportunity to narrow the field of candidates in some congressional contests, and the first gubernatorial primary is going to be taking place in North Carolina. We'll uh, have coverage throughout the morning and, of course, be checking in with ABC News. It's 5.09. Time for a look at traffic and weather together. Brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. Andy, things getting off to a good start. Yeah, so far through the Valley, dry roads and good speeds on our freeways, I-15, 215, and I-80. But uh, Mountain View, you got a couple of intersections, uh, especially going up the hill in uh, West Valley towards uh, 5400 South, that you might have to slow down just a little bit. Michelle? Well, we're already seeing delays for drivers on the south side of Hill Air Force Base trying to get onto the base. The west side's still looking good at that gate. Now, if you're on I-15 making your way from Ogden into Salt Lake, that's seeing good speeds. Heather? No problems right now in Utah County. We've got a good drive on I-15, much better than yesterday. Right now, everybody's at speed from Payson all the way to the point of the mountain. And so far, no problems coming out of Eagle Mountain or Saratoga Springs. Don't let tax problems ruin your life. Let Utah tax attorney Jordan Wilcox handle the IRS so you don't have to. Visit TaxHelpUT.com. That's TaxHelpUT.com. Heather Kelly in the KSL Traffic Center. Mostly cloudy skies today with a high of 47. Overnight, we keep the clouds around and milder overnight lows in the mid-30s. For tomorrow, 51, mostly cloudy and a slight chance for an isolated shower. From the KSL Weather Center, 
I'm Matt Johnson. Let's see where we start the morning. Uh, right on the freezing mark, actually. 32 degrees this hour. Well, the next uh, solar eclipse is coming up on April 8th, so we're just a little more than a month away from it. And I was reading this morning that the next total solar eclipse that can be seen from the contiguous United States won't happen until 2044, August of 2044. Uh, it can be a financial boom for uh, places that, you know, will have the best view of it. Jim Ryan's going to help us run all of that information down coming up in just a few minutes. Stay with me at KSL News Radio. Streaming live, of course, at kslnewsradio.com and on the app for KSL News Radio, Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. When you're high, you feel different. You think different, you talk different, you draw different, you listen to music different, but you probably knew that. Problem is, you also drive different, and not in a good way. That's why driving high is illegal everywhere. So if you're high, just don't drive. Make a plan to get a sober ride. Because if you feel different, you drive different. Brought to you by NHTSA and the Ad Council. If you've been enjoying a little too much food, too many sweets, and too much liquid cheer over the holidays, then you've probably put a lot of stress on your liver. A great way to show your liver some love and to detox your system is simply adding active liver to your daily routine. Active liver is an easy and effective way to keep your liver healthy and functioning properly all year long. You can find active liver at Amazon.com or for a volume discount, go to new N-O-R-D-I-C-U-S-A.com or ask for active liver at your local CVS. Dave and Debbie. I want our listeners to feel like they have an advocate, that they have somebody that's going to fight for them, challenge the status quo or the pithy soundbite. We have a unique job where we have access to interviews and people that not everyone has. We take that seriously. So if we do feel like we're getting a spin, then we can challenge it. I love it when people tell me, I was just thinking about that question that you asked. I'm glad you asked that question. That's like the height of compliment. I want our listeners to feel empowered to use the information that they've learned on the David Dujanovic show to help their families to help make good decisions, help investigate other avenues to maybe protect their family's safety or protect their family's money. I'm hopeful our show leaves our listeners with a sense of empowerment so they can make the best decision possible for themselves and for their families. Listen for Dave and Dejanovic 9 to noon on KSL News Radio. Email from school about the incident today. Scary. Tell me about it. Did you have any idea that was going on? None. I mean, you saw Derek at the game last night, too. Did you have a clue? No, but you know, teachers like me, parents, we don't always know as much as you guys do. Kids hear first about what's going on with other kids. Half the time, it's rumors. It can be hard to tell sometimes, but if you have a concern about a friend who's having trouble with alcohol, prescription drugs, bullying, violence, anything, you need to tell an adult. Mom or me, a teacher, coach, school counselor, someone you know and trust. Dad, no kid is gonna tell an adult about that kind of stuff. I get it, but if we don't know, we can't help. Speaking up about a problem, that's what helping a friend is all about. For more information, visit underagedrinking.samsa.gov. KSL News Time, 515. The three things you need to know this hour. First, it's Super Tuesday. Voters heading to the polls or caucus meetings in 15 states and American Samoa to make their choices known for president. I'm KSL News Radio's Becky Bruce. Second, a San Pete woman who uh, used to work at a clinic is charged with defrauding Medicaid out of nearly $13 million. Third, it's traffic and weather together. So far, no crashes to report. Good speeds on the freeways. Canyons are open and right now without restriction. Road conditions much improved over what we saw yesterday for sure. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. Mostly cloudy skies today with a high of 47. I'm Matt Johnson. On the freezing mark to start the morning, it's 32 degrees downtown with KSL's top national stories. From ABC News. 
I'm Sherry Preston. It's Super Tuesday. Voters in 15 states headed to the polls today as former President Donald Trump appears poised to clinch the Republican nomination soon for a third time. Here's ABC's Ike Jachi. Today's primaries come after the Supreme Court unanimously ruled that individual states cannot ban Trump from the presidential ballot. Courts in three states, Colorado, Maine, and Illinois, had ruled Trump should be banned because of his actions surrounding the January 6th riot, citing the 14th Amendment, which says no one who has taken an oath to support the Constitution and then engaged in insurrection can hold public office afterwards. Nikki Haley still insists she's the only Republican who can beat Donald Trump, even though she's only won a single primary in the District of Columbia. The trial for the father of Michigan shooter Ethan Crumbly begins today. Like his wife, who was convicted, Jonathan Crumbly is charged with involuntary manslaughter. Former federal prosecutor Mark Chuckow says the defense's case will be challenging. The dad was the one that bought the gun. He was a gun owner. He knew how to safely store guns, and yet he didn't. A lot box was still in the factory settings and uh, the cable lock wasn't used. Huge industrial fire in suburban Detroit overnight. What it sounded like continuous explosions in Clinton Township, Michigan. Scraps of metal raining down from the structure. People were warned to stay inside, but no one was hurt. If you're chronically late with your credit card payments, you'll like this story. The typical credit card late fee cost consumers $32. The president just cut that to eight. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau finalizing a rule that says it will save American families $10 billion a year in late fees, or about $220 per family, if they don't pay their statements by their due date. Credit card companies fought to stop the new rule, saying it will force them to raise interest rates. ABC's Andy Field. Five people were killed overnight when the small plane they were in crashed alongside an interstate in Nashville. You're listening to ABC News. Time now for the KSL In-Depth. All across the country, people are planning on how to maximize the viewing of a solar eclipse that's happening on April 8th. Joining uh, me live is ABC News correspondent Jim Ryan. Some of these small towns, Jim, are probably going to have the biggest day they've ever seen. Yeah, and they're going to welcome that, Tim. Uh, Hillsboro, Texas, down south of Dallas-Fort Worth, about 40 miles, is hosting a whole day-long event. Uh, they have music going on. The Marshall Tucker Band is going to play. Uh, they're going to have uh, local bands. The hotels are filling up quickly. Restaurants are taking reservation. Hillsboro will have one of the longest durations of the total eclipse, of totality, darkness. In other words, uh, on that day, April 8th, when this total eclipse comes moving across the country. It'll start down in south, in, in the Rio Grande Valley of Texas, down around Uvalde and Eagle Pass, then move up through San Antonio and Dallas, uh, then through Arkansas and up to the northeast from there. So a lot of people are going to get a look at this. Marshall Tucker Band, I didn't even know they were still around, but uh, I do like their music of old. Uh, this whole thing's going to last three and a half to four minutes. That's a long way to go and a lot of money to spend for the show, isn't it? Uh, well, and a lot of people are doing it. They're, they're big fans of that, and they're booking airline flights, and the airlines, American and Delta and Southwest, have all uh, uh, set aside aircraft that they're going to take off from places like San Antonio and then follow the totality. So people on those planes will be in darkness for a much longer period as they head northeast uh, under the, uh, the the shade of the moon, if you will. Why? I don't know, but they're willing to do it. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. Four, three or four minutes worth of, uh, of darkness. It uh, could be a real economic boon to places like Hillsboro, Texas. I actually have family friends that have already booked their, uh, I, I don't know exactly where they're going, but they've already booked their hotel and planned their trip here. I was also reading this morning that if you miss this one, it won't happen again for another 20 years. You know, I think that's why people are so excited about this. People in the the uh, astronomical community and others, you know, and, and people certainly living in these 13 states where you know, where you're going to get a good view of this. So, yeah, it's the it's the novelty of it. It's the, the weird things that may happen. Flowers will start to close, you know. Birds are going to go back to their roost during this time. They think it's nighttime. So, yeah, and Texas will see more, more people here in Texas will see it than anywhere else in the country. All right, Jim, thanks for your All coverage right. of this. Well, I'm sure we'll talk about it again coming up when oh, we yes. get closer to it. April 8th is the date for those of you that want to put it on the calendar. Jim Ryan, of course, ABC News correspondent, helps us out uh, from time to time on the in-depth at 15 and 45. Uh, by the way, Tennessee, Arkansas, Kentucky, other uh, states are going to be doing it. I was noticing in Russellville, Arkansas, you want to talk about a small town, they're expecting over 100,000 tourists to come to that one spot because they're in the bullseye for it. 
All right, let's get a look at how the drive is shaping up. Traffic and weather together brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. We go back to Andy Farnsworth. Well, Tim, it's a nice start for drivers coming out of Tooele County this morning. Dry roads from Tooele City up to Lake Point and on to I-80. Haven't seen anything uh, to add to your 20-minute drive from Point of the Mountain to downtown on I-15 in Salt Lake. And Mountain View was looking heavy earlier in uh, West Valley, but looks good right now. Michelle? Seeing good conditions for drivers on I-15 coming in from Ogden all the way down to Salt Lake. You're seeing good speeds there. Also, if you're on Legacy or I-215, that's in good shape. We do see some slowing, though, at Hill Air Force Base on the south and west gates. Heather? No problems in Utah County right now. I-15 at speed all the way to the point of the mountain. We are seeing a little bit of congestion, though, at the intersection of 2100 North Redwood Road in Lehigh. But if you're heading out to the Wasatch Back, I-80 and US-40 are in good shape. Heather Kelly in the KSL Traffic Center. KSL 7-day forecast keeps the clouds around for the next few days. Mostly cloudy today, 47. 51 tomorrow, mostly cloudy. Slight chance for an isolated shower. Better chance for scattered rain snow showers on Thursday, 45 the high. We drop down to 42, partly cloudy on Friday. Sunny on Saturday, 50 degrees, 54, we're rebounding, partly cloudy on Sunday, and then it's 57 with a mix of sun and clouds on Monday. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. Right now in Salt Lake City, 32 degrees, and the seven-day forecast is brought to you by Performance Automotive Bountiful. It is Super Tuesday, and uh, coverage all day long today. Do want to remind you, too, that tomorrow morning is going to be among the most important days for you to be here in the morning, starting at 5 o'clock, as we'll have uh, results uh, not just here in Utah, but, of course, 14 other states to report to you. Uh, speaking of that coverage, Boyd Matheson today on his Inside Sources will dedicate another half hour between 1.30 and 2 o'clock to significant coverage it was great yesterday i had a chance to listen to the entire thing uh, but want to remind you too that our coverage uh, will last until 9 p.m tonight board's going to be joined or will be joining jeff kaplan and mauro carabello here on ksl news radio for coverage but uh david dujanovic on the case this morning between uh, 9 and noon, and uh, Boyd will be covering it 1 to 3. Jeff Kaplan's afternoon news, and then the special coverage continuing even after 7 o'clock. So keep it on KSL News Radio. Let's see what we did yesterday for uh, markets. We were down, I think, and we've got more red numbers to start the day today. The Dow was off about 100 points. The S&P was down 6, the NASDAQ down 67. We'll see what the futures look like and the rest of your money news headlines when we come back. Right now might just be the perfect time to upgrade your living space to one that has, well, a little more space. You've earned the equity in your home. It's now time to put it to good use. Whether it's opening up a cramped or dated floor plan, adding a little more luxury to your bath, or finally building the kitchen of your dreams, Golden West Credit Union has a home equity line of credit for a low introductory rate of 5.49% APR fixed for six months. With a Golden West Home Equity Credit Line, you'll save money with no fees or closing costs. And Golden West makes accessing the equity in your home easy with a Visa Platinum Card. Start making the most of your equity today and make your plans a reality. Apply at any branch, online at gwcu.org or on our mobile app. Equal Housing Lender, NMLS number 440574. We'll take care of you. For over 100 years and four generations, my family has provided quality installations from the most well-known brands in the heating and air conditioning industry. Hello, I'm Brian Jackson with Manuel Plumbing and Heating. Now, until March 1st, purchase a high-efficient home comfort system and receive a free bypass humidifier or a 5-inch media filter to complete your new system. Give us a call and let one of our knowledgeable sales staff provide a free in-home consultation on what Manuel can do for you and your home. Be sure to ask about rebates and our financing options. Call Manuel today, 801-262-46. Watching Utah's Money brought to you by Trajan Wealth, your trusted local fiduciary advisors, TrajanWealth.com. Well, Jeff Bezos has reclaimed the title of the richest person on earth, dethroning Elon Musk. 
The Bloomberg Billionaires Index uh, says last year Bezos gained $23 billion. And just in case you're feeling sorry for Elon for falling into second place, he lost about $31 billion, but still uh, qualifies to be right there at the top. Uh, Whole Foods is launching what they call a quick shop format to extend their services to urban neighborhoods. It's called the Whole Foods Market Daily Shop, and each shop will be smaller, but will include basically everything a standard Whole Foods uh, has. That venture will start in New York City. And the European Union is uh, fining Apple almost $2 billion. We told you about this yesterday. They say that Apple is unfairly favoring its own music streaming service by not letting apps like Spotify tell users how to pay for cheaper subscriptions outside of iPhone apps. Uh, Apple, of course, says they plan to appeal that fine. Speaking of Apple, there was another note uh, about Apple stock today uh, or the uh, anticipation that the stock's going to take a hit. Apple's iPhone sales slumped 24% in China to start the year, and that's become a big part of uh, what has been pushing their uh, stock. And, of course, the NASDAQ uh, tends to move based on what Apple stock does, and today it's moving in the wrong direction. Uh, the futures are down about 80 points. That's a bit more than four-tenths of a percent. The S&P is down 12, and the Dow Jones off just a fraction. It's down uh, 56 points, which is about a tenth. We'll have the opening bell for you coming up in a few hours. Coming up in just a minute, we'll uh, get the latest on the drive this morning. So far, not a lot of you out there. Just a little slowing at the Southgate at Hill Air Force Base. Traffic and weather together in two minutes. Hi, I'm Henry Winkler. My eyes are very important to me. My eyes connect me with everything I love. I loved my late father-in-law dearly. He always lit up a room, but his vision dimmed with age. He had age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. And since partnering with Apellus, I've learned there's an advanced form of dry AMD called geographic atrophy, or GA. His struggle with vision loss made me want to help others know about GA's warning signs. For some, colors appear dull or washed out. For others, hazy or blurred vision make it hard to see details, like fine print on price tags. Many have trouble seeing in the dark, making driving at night difficult. GA gets worse over time and cannot be reversed. If you think you have GA, don't wait. Treatments are available. Ask a retina specialist about FDA-approved treatments for GA. And go to gawontwait.com. Tim and Amanda. I don't want to be in the dark about things. I'm sure you don't either, Tim. Mm. I mean, I want to know. What's going on with the weather? Are my kids safe? You know, where is my money going? I want to be informed. Yeah, the truth is, it's important information for you and your families to make sure that you are informed so that if some changes are necessary in your life or your children's life, you can make them by listening and starting your morning with us here on KSL. Wake up with Utah's morning news with Tim and Amanda, 5 to 9 on KSL News Radio. Today's vote may seal the race for president. The two major parties in Utah are taking opposite approaches. Democrats will have a primary election. The United Utah Party and American Independent Party will also be having their caucuses. It all begins by showing up. Caucus night is the opportunity to do that. Super Tuesday. 16 states and territories vote, and more than 1,000 delegates are awarded. Listen for special coverage today. today. Plus, get analysis and reaction all day tomorrow. tomorrow. Utah's Super Tuesday Caucus on KSL News Radio. Coming up on 529, traffic and weather together. Brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay App. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. And he's back in the traffic center. Well, our main corridor of I-15 through Salt Lake County looks great. So does I-80 out of Tooele so far. Much better road conditions today than yesterday. A little bit heavy going in uh, Redwood Road in West Jordan up the hill towards uh, Taylorsville. Uh, and then just heard a report of a crash uh, near the 21st South Freeway Southside Frontage Road near Bangor Highway. Heather or uh, Michelle? Well, we do have a heads up for people that are maybe driving up in Logan. We have signal problems affecting all directions at 1000 West and 1400 North. You need to treat that as a four-way stop. I-15 rolling into downtown all the way from Ogden looking at good speeds there. Heather? We're already starting to pick up a little bit of congestion for people coming out of Eagle Mountain this morning. This is on Cedar Fort Road, both eastbound and westbound right near Sunset Drive. Other than that, you've got a great commute through uh, Utah County this morning and no problems out on the Wasatch back so far trying to get to the ski resorts in and around Park City. 
Get your money working at America First Credit Union with an amazing rate on certificates up to 5.5% APY for a limited time. Visit AmericaFirst.com today to learn more. Heather Kelly in the KSL Traffic Center. All right, so uh, we start to warm things up today. 47 for a high. We'll be at 51 tomorrow, and by the end of the seven-day period on Monday... 57 degrees, knocking on the door of 60 again. There is a slight chance of showers today. We'll keep an eye on that. But right now, it's uh, cold out there, 32 degrees. You're listening to Utah's Morning News with Tim Hughes and Amanda Dixon on KSL News Radio, 102.7 FM and 1160 AM. Good morning. KSL News Time is 5 30, and our top story this hour a Davis County teen is home safe after sending a secret help signal to his family. KSL News Radio's Peter Johnston is live with the details of that story. Peter? Tim, police found this missing teen in a hotel room with four adult men, accusing one of them of attempting to kidnap the boy. It all hinged on that teenager changing his voicemail. The 14-year-old's family reported him as a possible runaway to Davis County Sheriff's Office Sunday night. But they had made a plan to redo their voicemail as a sign of trouble and noticed when their child changed his. KSL TV reports that police got a second clue when that teen shared his location with his family. The sheriff's office say they believe this alleged predator, sick 36-year-old Austin David Arnold, met the teen online and was planning to bring him to California. Reporting live, Peter Johnston, KSL News Radio. The Utah legislative session came to a heated end. A new bill calls for more accountability for the office of the uh, Salt Lake County DA, uh, Sim Gill. KSL TV's Daniel Woodruff reports. Senate Bill 273 requires Gill's office to report how his prosecutors spend their time in 15 minute increments. It also allows the governor or the group overseeing revitalizing downtown to recommend that the Utah Supreme Court remove Gill and replace him. Opponents to the bill argue that it would uh, burden Gill's office. Supporters say it would help prosecute criminals more thoroughly. The widow of a man who died in custody is suing Salt Lake County and several people connected to the county jail saying that they should have acted sooner to address his medical needs. KSL News Radio's Becky Bruce has that story live. Becky? Tim, Amy Baker's lawsuit comes almost exactly two years after she says her husband Leland Cooper died in jail custody in obvious medical distress. The suit claims he was six foot two but weighed just 128 pounds at booking and lost more than 15 pounds over five days. During that time, the suit claims people checked on him but never offered additional treatment. Baker is seeking damages on behalf of herself and the couple's four children. She wants a jury trial to determine what those damages should be. Live, Becky Bruce, KSL News Radio. KSL's top national stories this hour. Voters in Colorado casting their votes in the state's primary where former President Donald Trump will remain on the ballot. The Supreme Court ruled giving the state the ability to remove a candidate from the uh, ballot grants them too much power. ABC News legal consultant Kate Shaw explains why new ballots do not need to be printed. The state court in Colorado ruled back in December that Trump was ineligible and shouldn't be on the ballot, but they stayed their own ruling, and actually the ballots were printed with Trump's name on them. Shaw says the uh, speed of their decision in this case could set a precedent for his immunity trial in April. Over 800 delegate spots will be decided in 15 states and one territory today. KSL News Radio's Mark Jackson has the details on Utah's place in Super Tuesday history. KSL at night's Mara Carabello says the Beehive State went it alone for a time, but its five electoral votes didn't garner much traction on the big stage. So we hitched a ride out west. A decade ago, we had all the western states. The west coast states are going to band together, and all the media attention is going to be on Nevada, New Mexico, Utah, Colorado, Wyoming. That fizzled, says Mara, and Utah joined 23 other states for Super Tuesday 2008. Bernie Sanders won the Utah Democratic primary on Super Tuesday of 2020, and former President Trump swept all delegates in the Republican primary that same year. Mark Jackson, KSL News Radio. The dates have been set for state and congressional debates here in Utah. Things kick off with the gubernatorial debate on September 23rd at Salt Lake Community College. Senate and several House candidates will uh, debate on uh, uh, at Utah State coming up in October. Nicholas Rossi will be back in court today. He's facing several charges after faking his death and fleeing the country to avoid rape charges. He still insists he is not Rossi and has been mistakenly extradited. 
Let's get that first look traffic check here and go back to Andy Farnsworth. And so far, so good, at least as far as crashes. We haven't had any pop up yet. Looks like we might have a little bit of slowing starting to go up the hill on 215 uh, over by 6200 south on the east belt. Maybe a little bit heavier traffic coming south into downtown from uh, Rose Park and North Salt Lake. But again, this is minor stuff so far. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. Utah Clean Energy is teaming up with UCARE to help cities become better prepared for electric vehicles. A shortage of charging stations remains one of the biggest obstacles for electric vehicle owners. Kelby Gopal with Utah Clean Energy says that's why they're working with cities to adopt EV-ready ordinances. What an EV-ready ordinance typically does is it requires that a certain percentage of parking spaces in a multifamily housing building be equipped with the right infrastructure to support installing an EV charging station in the future. She says about 80% of EV charging takes place at home, which is fine for people living in single-family houses, but becomes difficult for people in apartment complexes. Don Brinkerhoff, KSL News Radio. Salt Lake City is trying to preserve and reuse historic buildings. This proposal, initiated by Salt Lake City Mayor Aaron Mendenhall, would make some changes to the zoning ordinances that would allow for more flexibility in reusing historic buildings. This means that some eligible buildings could be transformed into multifamily residential use, even if the property is zoned on institutional or public lands. It would also change the eligibility requirements for historic buildings to include any building with a minimum age of 50 years, increasing the number of buildings that can be reused and preserved. KSL News Radio's Alessandra Gurr reports the proposal was unanimously passed by the Planning Commission and will be heard by the City Council this week. Bryce National Park officials say they're going to make it easier to ride horses through the park. The riding permits will now be more accessible online after almost a thousand applications were uh, filed last year. Almost a decade ago, there were just 124 applications. And a pair of farmers hauling a a trailer full of goats had to pull over during Saturday's storm. Two residents in Tooele County share how people rallied to help feed and milk the animals until they could get back on the road again. I told my mom, hey, we got to go down to Tractor Supply. There's 50 goats down there that need to be milked. Strangers helping strangers. It was it was amazing. I love that. Uh, Volunteers worked until travel conditions improved and uh, sounds like all the goats are just fine. Minor slowing southbound I-15 at Rose Park approaching uh, the 600 North area. We'll double-check that and the rest of the valley with traffic and weather together next. Utah's Super Tuesday Caucus. Democrats, Republicans, here in the state of Utah, everybody can be part of the process. Get action steps for you to caucus tonight, today at 135, with Inside Sources on KSL News Radio. Getting help with electrical repairs is easier than you think. All you have to do is call Any Hour Services or schedule an appointment at anyhourservices.com. No one helps more homeowners than Any Hour Services. Some things are better together, like burgers and fries, movies and popcorn, and auto and home insurance. At Farm Bureau Financial Services, we'll help you bundle your auto and home coverage in one policy, saving you money. And if a storm hits and both are damaged, you'll pay a single deductible. Find an agent at fbfs.com slash protect. It's your future. Let's protect it. Farm Bureau Property and Casualty Insurance Company, Western Agricultural Insurance Company. I'm Dave Cauley, investigative journalist and host of the podcast, Cold. Don't miss Cold's new season three, where I look into the unsolved disappearance of Cherie Warren, a woman last seen leaving her job at a Salt Lake City office in 1985. Police cast suspicion on Cherie's estranged husband and boyfriend, but never made any arrests or recovered Cherie's remains. Find Cold Season 3, The Search for Cherie, anywhere you get your podcasts. Boy, this story of the uh, Davis County 14-year-old that signaled to his family that he was in some uh, need, in some uh, tough situation, by changing his voicemail uh, should be a lesson for all of us. If you have that discussion with your kids, what they can do to possibly flag you that there is a problem. Uh, the family evidently had recently discussed uh, as a possible safety tip in case something were to go wrong to change his voicemail message. And that was enough of a signal for the family to uh, uh, go looking for him. And they found him and arrested a man that had come from California with some uh, 
nefarious plans. Anyway, we'll have more on that story coming up for you with our Peter Johnston this morning. It's 539. Time for us to get a look at traffic and weather together is brought to you by Sinclair's DinoPay app, where you can save up to 20 cents a gallon. And he's back in the traffic center. And so far, we haven't had anything on the freeways, at least heading north to Salt Lake, that uh, will really add to your drive time. I-15 all clear. Mountain View and Bangor, uh, not really much going on. There was a crash reported near Bangor on the uh, frontage road on the south side of uh, 201. But I haven't seen. Now, there might be a little bit of slowing as you uh, come over if you're on the south side frontage road just before you merge up with Bangor. Michelle? Well, that slowing that was southbound I-15 going through Rose Park, that has eased up, so you're not seeing any delays on I-15 all the way from Ogden into the downtown. If you're on Legacy or I-215, those are also good options if you're trying to make your way south. Heather? No accidents reported right now in Utah County, so you've got pretty good speeds on all the roadways. I-15 has most of the traffic, but it's pretty light right now. So you're about 20, 25 minutes from Springville to the point of the mountain. The Wasatch back looks really good if you're going on I-80 over Parley's Canyon. Occasionally you've got a slow-moving semi, but that's the only thing that might delay you. Heather Kelly in the KSL Traffic Center. Courtesy of small, low-pressure systems passing by to the north, we'll keep it mostly cloudy today, high of 47. Overnight, cloudy skies, 35 the low. 51 for tomorrow afternoon, mostly cloudy, slight chance for a shower, maybe a better chance for a rain-snow shower on Thursday. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. Salt Lake City right on the freezing mark to start the morning. It's 32 degrees. It's not only Super Tuesday, but it is Tuesday Tech or Tech Tuesday. I guess I got that backwards. Mike Debusky will join us. He's one of our favorite interviews, and we'll have him coming up here in just a minute. All things Apple. I guess there's a new MacBook Air coming, and then we told you about that big find from the EU uh, when it comes to their Apple Store policies. We'll ask Mike about it coming up next here on uh, KSL. Remember to look for us streaming live at KSLNewsRadio.com and on the app for KSL News Radio. We're Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. Odds are, if you have a 401k, it's set up with your payroll provider or an insurance company. I'm Jeff Jr. with Trajan Wealth, and if you're using your payroll provider or an insurance company for your 401k, the employer may be overpaying for the plan, the employees may have blasé investment options, and those blasé investment options may cost more than they should. Not with Trajan Wealth. Call us today, 801-899-7600. That's 801-899-7600. Services offered through a third-party partner. Two years ago, Americans watched in horror as a crisis unfolded at the Kabul airport. There's desperation and anguish. More than 80,000 Afghans have since arrived in America, but this story is still unfolding. I'm Andrea Smartin. In my new podcast, Stranger Becomes Neighbor, we'll find out what happens to these new arrivals in our communities. Who would help our newest neighbors? Follow us at kslpodcast.com, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere else you listen. Rick at loansbyrick.com has some important information for anyone in Utah and Idaho who's thinking of buying a house. Do it now. Don't wait until summer because home prices in those two states will likely increase by 10 to 20 percent due to in-migration from California and other states. That means a house that costs 400000 right now will go up by 40 to 80 grand with multiple offers. Interest rates may drop later in the year, possibly to the 6% range, but the increased cost of the home will mean that your monthly payments will go up by a lot. So start looking and buy now. Refinance when the interest rates go down. Waiting to buy your home will only hurt you in the long run. For more details and buying strategies, call Rick at loansbyrick.com right now. 801-809-SAVE. Rick can evaluate your situation and get you on the path to buying a home today. 801-809-SAVE or click loansbyrick.com. Rick Kirschbaum, NMLS 241179 and Vintage Lending, NMLS 287106 are equal housing lenders. Some restrictions apply. Email from school about the incident today. Scary. You know... Teachers like me, parents, we don't always know as much as you guys do about what's going on with other kids. Half the time, it's rumors. Yeah, but if you're ever concerned about a friend who's having trouble with alcohol, prescription drugs, anything, you need to tell an adult, someone you know and trust. That can be hard, but speaking up about a problem is what helping a friend is all about. For more information, visit underagedrinking.samhsa.gov. Good morning, KSL News Time 545. 
The three things you need to know this hour. First, tonight's caucus is all about having a dialogue, according to the Republican Party chair in Utah. Republicans are meeting at hundreds of locations across the state. I'm KSL News Radio's Amy Kobe. Second, police say the man who shot a teen outside of Murray McDonald's is now behind bars in Colorado. The teen is still in the hospital in critical condition. Third, a look at the drive with traffic and weather together. I-15 traffic is moving well into downtown, whether you're starting out north or south. We've got spots on city streets where things are filling in a little bit as people get up and get going, but uh, nothing you need to worry about yet. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. Lots of clouds for the next few days and slight rain and snow chances. I'm Matt Johnson. Right now, 32 degrees and time for a look at our top national story. ABC News, I'm Sherry Preston. It's Super Tuesday. Voters in 15 states headed to the polls today in the biggest one-day contest of the election cycle, and all more than 860 delegates to the National Convention will be chosen. More snow on the way in the Sierra Nevada mountains of California. ABC's Faith of Ube is in the city of Truckee, where people are bracing for even more. People in this area are used to snow, but it's gotten to the point where they're concerned about the structural integrity of their rooftops. The Sierra Nevada mountains has seen more than 10 feet of snow just in the last four days and wind gusts upwards of 190 miles per hour. And there was a massive industrial fire in suburban Detroit last night. That's what some of it sounded like, pieces of metal raining down. People were told to stay inside, but no one was hurt. Heavily armed gangs tried to seize control of Haiti's main airport in Port-au-Prince on Monday. Following a mass escape from the country's two largest prisons, at least 4,000 inmates were released by gangs over the weekend. This is ABC News. Time now for the KSL In-Depth. There's a lot coming out of Silicon Valley this week, including Apple updates and massive Apple fine. Uh, joining me live, ABC News technology reporter Mike Debusky. Let's take several bites of the apple here. <laughs> I like. What, I see what you did there. Yeah, That's yeah. Uh, let's start with this. That big fine from the EU when it comes to uh, blocking out other um, music apps out there. Yeah, that's right. Big moment in antitrust over in Europe. So on Monday, the European Commission fined Apple 1.8 billion euros. That's the equivalent of about $2 billion over what they called abusive app store policies. Apple, of course, runs the app store. That's where companies like Spotify really reside and rely on to access the Apple ecosystem. Well, in 2020, Spotify filed a complaint with the European Commission saying that there is a rule in the App Store, essentially, that bars them from advertising cheaper subscription options. Apple, of course, runs Apple Music. As we mentioned, they also run the App Store, which is, again, what Spotify relies upon in order to get access to Apple's customers. Well, the EU took a look at this, and they ruled that the measure was anti-competitive. They fined Apple those $2 billion, and they're requiring them to change that particular rule in the App Store. But I think an important bit of context here, one half of 1% of Apple's total turnover is what is uh, is equivalent to $2 billion. So I think they will financially recover from that. Yeah, and they say they will appeal that. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm wondering, uh, they also backed out of their plans to make an electric car, the Apple car. Did that help or hurt their stock? It almost seemed like there was a relief by some. <laughs> yes, yeah, so the Apple stock did go up when this announcement came down uh, You know, in recent days. Um, but this has been a long-running project over at Apple. Since 2014, they've been developing a car of some kind. Now, the remit here has changed pretty significantly over those 10 years, but the original idea behind uh, the Apple car, as it was known, was that it was going to be completely electric and completely autonomous. It wasn't going to have a steering wheel. It wasn't going to have pedals. You just got in, you told Siri where you wanted to go, and it would take you there. But Apple quickly ran into a lot of complexities, both in terms of the car world in general, which is very complex, and you spend a lot of money developing factories and safety techniques and getting approvals from government regulators, and also from their own internal struggles, which, you know, you can't take an Apple car into an Apple store in a mall and get it repaired. Where are you <laughs> going to charge these things? Like, there's a lot of just sort of logistical hurdles that they had to get over. Well, as of last week, they've killed the project. We think about 2,000 people were working on it at the time. Project Titan is what it was known as. Some of those people will move over to Apple's artificial intelligence team, which I think is notable, and others will be laid off. But as of right now, the Apple car is dead after 10 years. All right, and uh, real quick, I guess you got behind, well, I don't know, did this one have a wheel? You were in an electric <laughs> car recently. 
This one did have a wheel. I got behind the wheel of a Fisker Ocean. Now, Fisker is a new company. It's not a totally new name. About 10 years ago, there was a company called uh, Fisker as well that made a car called the Karma. This is a completely distinct entity. Uh, and their new vehicle is called the Ocean. It's a midsize electric SUV targeted at Tesla's Model Y. Uh, it's very fast in a straight line, I have to say. Zero to 60 in 3.7 seconds. That was supercar territory not that long ago. Now it's in a five-passenger SUV. Um, some interesting uh, modes and technology in this vehicle. It has a Hollywood mode where your 17-inch infotainment screen rotates like a phone. It can go from portrait to landscape mode. So if you're sitting at a charging port and you want to watch a movie, you can do that <laughs> using that mode. There's also California mode because, of course, this is a California-based company that rolls down all the windows. So you get all the fresh air from around you. Uh, and that was a pretty interesting mode to, to roll around in. But there has been some, some struggles over at Fisker just last week week we saw their Q4 earnings. They said they don't have enough cash to survive the next 12 months and that they are uh, looking for a large automaker to make an investment. The rumor has it is that it's going to be Nissan. So we'll have to see where Fisker goes in the future. But for my first drive, it was a pretty competent electric vehicle. But again, it's very hard to build a car as we're learning from both Fisker and as it turns out from Apple. All right. And the opportunity to watch a movie while you're charging. Not a bad idea. Maybe they mm-hmm. need a microwave so you can have popcorn along the way too. Um, <laughs> Mike, thanks as always. Uh, we enjoy this uh, Tech Tuesday. That is uh, ABC News technology reporter Mike Dubusky on the in-depth at 15 and 45. Traffic and weather together, again brought to you by Sinclair's DinoPay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. Andy, how are we looking? Well, 201's getting a bit heavy out in uh, Magna near 8400 West, but it's pretty clear after that. It's been nice in Tooele County this morning on SR36 and the I-80 drive. Uh, I-15 between Draper and Salt Lake, still less than 20 minutes travel time through the valley. Michelle? Still looking good if you're making your way from Ogden, headed into downtown. This is the looking at a KSL travel time of about 34 minutes from Ogden to downtown. If you're on Legacy or I-215, you're also seeing good speeds there. Heather? Things are pretty quiet in Utah County. No delays right now on I-15 either direction between Payson and the Point of the Mountain. We're seeing a few more cars filter in on the west side of I-15, mostly in Saratoga Springs and Eagle Mountain but so far no big delays and no accidents reported trying to get through Parley's Canyon to and from Park City. Revere Health encourages you to schedule your preventative care and annual checkups to help increase the potential to live your most healthy and active life. Revere Health, your partner in health, your partner in life. Heather Kelly in the KSL Traffic Center. KSL 7-day forecast starts out with a high of 47 today with mostly cloudy skies. Keeping the clouds around for tomorrow, a slight chance for an isolated shower, high of 51 degrees. 45, chance for rain-snow showers on Thursday, then drying out Friday, partly cloudy, high of 42. Time to rebound with high pressure, Saturday sunny, 50. 54 on Sunday goes to 57, partly cloudy skies on Monday. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. We do have some teens out there this morning in the uh, usual uh, spots. Logan 19, Park City 17 to start the morning is 27 in Ogden, 29 in Provo, 32 in Salt Lake City. And the seven-day forecast is brought to you by Performance Automotive Bountiful. We'll get money news up next. I love being a bartender. I love waiting tables. But at the end of my shift, my feet were killing me. And so I had to pretend like I was having a good time. And really, I couldn't wait to sit down. But it wasn't just my feet. It was also my knees were achy. A lot of neck pain, too. I was in so much pain. I kind of lost hope, really. And then I saw the Good Feet store. And that's when everything changed. For over 20 years, we've helped people like Kristen enjoy their work again without their feet getting in the way. It was pretty shocking to realize that I'd been in so much pain and suddenly I'm completely pain free. Now that I have the Good Feet Arch Supports, I don't have to pretend to be happy. I'm genuinely happy. So, cheers. My name is Kristen and that's my Good Feet story. See what we can do for you with a free personalized arch support fitting. 
at the Goodfeet store. Stop by the Goodfeet store in Farmington, Riverton, or Sandy for a free fitting. Call 1 800 New Feet or visit Goodfeet.com. Visit the contest page on KSLNewsRadio.com. This week, win tickets to comedian Jim Gaffigan on the Barely Alive Tour Friday, October 25th at the Eccles Theater. Or win tickets to an upcoming Real Salt Lake match. Listen to the RSL game on KSLSports.com. Plus, win tickets to see Tim McGraw on his standing room only tour April 5th at the Delta Center. Text the word contest to 57500 or go to kslnewsradio.com slash contests. Watching Utah's Money brought to you by Trajan Wealth, your trusted local fiduciary advisors, trajanwealth.com. Target's annual revenue dropped for the first time in seven years. Their end-of-year earnings were just over $107 billion. That's down 1.6% from the previous year. The Wall Street Journal says less people are splurging on home goods and electronics, and Target earns most of its sales for those kinds of items, especially compared to competitors like Walmart. More than half of college graduates are underemployed. Research from the Burning Glass Institute and the Strata Institute say about 52% of college grads are working jobs they uh, don't make any use of, that don't make any use of their diploma. A Gallup poll says only 36% of Americans had confidence in higher education. And the Biden administration is moving to cap credit card late fees at 8 bucks. It's the latest effort in the White House push to end junk fees. The administration says it could save Americans up to $10 billion a year. According to the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, the average credit card late fee is about $32. Your money at this moment, uh, everything in the red to start the day. We closed down yesterday as well during Jeff Kaplan's afternoon news. Uh, futures today off to a red start, off 86 on the Dow, down 16 and a quarter on the S&P and the NASDAQ. This hour is down 103 points. It's time this morning for Cougar Tracks, brought to you by Central Bank CB Vault, Utah's help center for startups and entrepreneurs. Visit cbutah.com. Here's BYU insider Mitch Harper. BYU football has completed three days of spring practice. The hot storyline at spring camp is the quarterback battle between Gary Bohannon and Jake Retzlaff. Offensive coordinator Aaron Roderick, however, has a different number one objective in spring, to establish the ground attack, an area where BYU ranked dead last a year ago in the Big 12. Obviously it starts up front, but it's tight ends, it's receivers, it's the quarterback getting us into the right play. A lot of our run plays are audibles or have the ability to be audibles. Sometimes it's, occasionally it's an RPO. We don't run a ton of those, but we do run some. And it's play action pass fitting together with the runs. So it's all of it. It's an 11 man deal, but that is our number one priority. We got to get back to running the football the way we did the three years prior to last year. For observations and notes from BYU football spring camp and the latest in the quarterback battle, Go to kslsports.com or download the KSL Sports app today. With Cougar Tracks, I'm Mitch Harper on your legacy home of the BYU Cougars, KSL News Radio. Are you a startup, entrepreneur, or business owner looking for funding? Look no further than Central Bank's CB Vault, Utah's help center for startups and entrepreneurs. CB Vault understands the unique challenges faced by business owners. CB Vault is here to help you start, grow, or thrive with a dedicated help center for startups and entrepreneurs, providing personalized financial solutions, networking, and guidance for every step of the way. With a range of services tailored for startups and small businesses and expert financial advice to flexible loan options, CB Vault helps you get funding and allows you to keep your equity. Whether you're seeking funding, planning expansion, or navigating the financial landscape, CB Vault's team of experts is ready to assist you in turning your vision into reality. Don't let financial barriers hold you back. Central Bank's CB Vault is here to unlock your business potential. Visit CB Vault today at cbutah.com. Central Bank, voted best bank in Utah Valley. Strong, local, secure. Since 1891, member FDIC, equal housing lender. The Cougars are fighting for their best chance in the Big Dance. BYU's displayed its resiliency throughout this campaign. Wow. The Big 12 tournament is days away, and then it's the NCAA tournament. This Wednesday, it's BYU, Iowa State. Free game is at 6 and tip off at 7 on Utah's legacy home for the Cougars. KSL News Radio. 5.59 means it's uh, time again for traffic and weather together. Brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. Here again is Andy Farnsworth. 
Tim, right now the drive through Salt Lake County continues to be a good one if you're taking the freeways, I-15 or I-215. Uh, both going north aren't seeing any delays. We got a little bit of heavy traffic on 201 out by the SR202, so if you're coming in from Tooele, you might have to catch uh, that uh, a little bit of heavy traffic at that traffic light, but then you're good all the rest of the way across the valley over to I-15. Heather? Or uh, Michelle? Well, we're still quiet if you're making your way into downtown from Ogden, looking good on I-15 as well as Legacy and I-215's West Belt. Heather? We're looking still really good in Utah County. Traffic's starting to fill in just a little bit on I-15, also coming out of Saratoga Springs, but you don't have any delays and no accidents reported that may hold you up. Use Superior Water and Air for all your HVAC and plumbing needs. Call 974-9090 or visit superiorwaterandair.com. Superior Water and Air, we got this. Heather Kelly in the KSL Traffic Center. So we start the warm-up today, uh, 47 degrees, finally getting to 51 tomorrow. As a matter of fact, one, two, three, four of the next six days will end up in the 50s with lows at night at or below the freezing mark and about a 30 or 40 percent chance of showers but boy saturday looks absolutely spectacular with 50 and sunshine mostly cloudy out there this morning and 32 degrees ksl fm midvale ksl salt lake city from the ksl common spirit health studios this is ksl news radio utah's news traffic and weather station Good morning, KSL News Time is 6 o'clock. This is Utah's Morning News. I'm Tim Hughes, Amanda Dixon, again with the morning off today. It is do or die time for Nikki Haley. This is a choice between do you want more of the same or do you want something new? Presidential candidates uh, encouraging voters to get excited for Super Tuesday, the busiest day of the primary season. Our live team coverage, Utah's Super Tuesday Caucus, begins with KSL News Radio's Becky Bruce at the elections desk. Becky? Tim, the two main Republican candidates left standing have been hitting their messages hard in the 15 states that are voting today. Go out and vote. Maybe we should say the reason that America keeps losing is because of Donald Trump. By the time today is all said and done, it's largely expected the stage will be set for a rematch between President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump in November. Here in Utah, Democrats will cast ballots, but Republicans opted for a caucus, one they've spent over a hundred thousand dollars to advertise. Our live team coverage continues with KSL News Radio's Amy Kobabe. The money is worth it to bring people out to debate and vote, according to Republican Party Chair Robert Axon. He says tonight will be a chance for people to debate with their neighbors about issues that matter to them. The vote will be in the form of a presidential preference poll. The results will then inform national delegates for when they attend the upcoming convention. We have all the locations and links to websites for all party caucuses listed on our website at kslnewsradio.com. Now our top national story this hour. Analysts say that former President Donald Trump is on the verge of clinching the Republican nomination for a third time. Today's primaries come after the Supreme Court unanimously ruled that individual states cannot ban Trump from the presidential ballot. Courts in three states, Colorado, Maine, and Illinois, had ruled Trump should be banned because of his actions surrounding the January 6th riot, citing the 14th Amendment, which says no one who has taken an oath to support the Constitution and then engaged in insurrection can hold public office afterwards. That's ABC's Ike Jachi reporting. Speaking of former President Donald Trump, he suggests the Re- Republican Party is ridding itself of people like Senator Mitt Romney and his niece, the former Republican National Committee chairwoman, Ronna McDaniel. He claimed at a campaign rally this weekend that his Make America Great Again uh, movement now represents a majority of the GOP, saying, quote, we're getting rid of the Romneys of the world. Utah Attorney General Sean Reyes is urging the Supreme Court to limit access to an abortion bill. A pill, rather. KSL News Radio's Peter Johnston is live with the details. Peter? Tim, this is just the latest Supreme Court case that could make abortion drugs the decision of states and not the federal government. A previous ruling from last year allowed the pills to still be sold. But now, Utah Attorney General Sean Reyes has added his name to a brief against the pill. He and 21 other attorneys general are saying that the Food and Drug Administration has overstepped its bounds by making this pill available nationwide and that it's become a constitutional issue. The U.S. Justice Department said in their own court ruling that a move against abortion drugs would open the door for a flood of lawsuits anytime the FDA approves medication for body parts like the heart. Oral arguments start March 26th. Reporting live, Peter Johnston, 
KSL News Radio. Another form of birth control is getting the green light. The maker of the O pill says the birth control pill will become available over the counter nationwide later this month after the FDA declared it safe and effective last summer. O pill is a progestin only birth control and it works in several ways to prevent pregnancy. One of the ways is that it thickens the lining in the cervix. The other way is that it stops ovulation. So, you know, there, there's it's working in multiple ways to prevent pregnancy. And when taken consistently, progestin-only birth control, like other forms of oral birth control, is kind of in the high 90s uh, percent effective. So 98 percent think when you take it at the same time every day. That's ABC's Sony Salzman uh, telling us how the pill works. First look, traffic. Uh, things are starting to get a little crowded out there, Andy. Yeah, there's a bit more traffic now on the roadways as you travel through the Salt Lake Valley, North 15 in Midvale. Getting a little heavy, but not really any additional drive time added. We're still crash-free, at least on the freeways. And uh, so far, at least for now, Canyon's not seeing any problems early this morning. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. New details uh, details this morning in a massive cyber attack that hit the nation's largest health insurer. Experts say it appears the United Health Group may have paid the hackers a $22 million ransom. Cybersecurity expert Scott Spiro says that might be the easiest solution, but it also sets up a vicious cycle. It's like uh, training a dog. You know, the dog does something and it gets a treat and just does it again. United Health has not confirmed the payment. Uh, it was first reported by Reuters and Wired. A former clinic worker is being charged uh, with tax evasion and public assistance fraud after police say she stole $13 million from Medicaid. Lillian Smiskey is accused of submitting more than 500 fraudulent Medicaid claims over the span of three years in Mount Pleasant. And a closed elementary school in Ogden is now opening its doors for entrepreneurs. KSL News Radio's Michael Commit joins me live to report. Michael? Tim, James Madison Elementary will become the site of a new kitchen incubator program. You think a training center food service for startups. Now, businesses which make the wait list will have access to the school's kitchen equipment, along with training and support. O-Town Kitchen will be serving as the anchor for the program, and owner Isaac Farley tells the Standard Examiner it's meant to be an educational one. Farley would also like to source raw products from local farmers and retail as well. For now, if you're interested in joining the wait list and maybe getting some training for food service startup, then check out O Town Kitchen's website. Reporting live, Michael Commit, Giz on News Radio. Thinking out of the box. I like it. More than 500 earthquakes have hit Milford in the last two weeks. KSL's Heather Peterson reports seismologists, though, not worried. The earthquakes are being caused by drilling into the earth for geothermal energy. Catherine Whitten, a research scientist from the University of Utah Seismograph Station, says this is to be expected. This is just part of developing the geothermal resource. It, it generates these really small earthquakes. Uh, people don't feel them at the surface, and there are measures in place to ensure that they stay small. All of the earthquakes have been relatively small at a 2.7 magnitude or below, and Whitten says there's nothing to worry about. They aren't expected to get any bigger. Heather Peterson, KSL News Radio. We have uh, no accidents or delays, really. I-15 from Provo to Salt Lake so far this morning. Hopefully it stays that way. We'll get another look at traffic and weather together in two minutes. Bigger stories demand more accountability, more experience, more trust. If it's like an election day or we're expecting some bad weather, KSL presents the story. I'm biased. It's a good local source. We have you covered at KSL News Radio. American energy is under attack. Joe Biden has waged a war on American natural resources and made it harder to produce affordable, reliable, and clean energy right here in Utah. Our energy prices are already going up. Biden's policies will make it worse. But Republican John Curtis has our back. There is no greater supporter of unleashing American energy than John Curtis. John Curtis knows our abundant natural resources help keep us free and safe. Powers our economy keeps the lights on, and keeps Utah on the move. John Curtis is Utah tough. He's taken the fight to Joe Biden and the Washington politicians who all want to hurt American energy. And now we need a conservative to take the fight to the United States Senate. We need Republican John Curtis, a strong defender of American energy dominance in the fight for us. Paid for by Clear Path Action Fund, not authorized by any candidate or candidate committee. In business, service is everything. Cintas delivers what you need to better serve your customers. Whether it's freshly laundered work apparel for almost any job imaginable, 
tested and inspected fire protection systems, first aid and safety supplies, on-site AED training, or mops and restroom products stocked and ready when you need them. Better work days happen together. So visit Cintas.com. Oh, I'm ready! And get ready for the work day. Hi, this is Scott Trout of Cordell & Cordell. If you're a dad who is facing divorce, there are extra layers of stress that may include stereotypes and assumptions. No two situations are the same. Our legal experience and dedication prepare us for whatever legal challenges we face together. You need a partner you can count on. For more than 30 years, Cordell & Cordell has represented men in divorce. Offices in Midvale and Clearfield. 1412 South Legend Hills Drive, Suite 200, Clearfield, Utah, 84015. Online at CordellCordell.com. Thanks for waking up with us this morning. It is Super Tuesday. This is a choice between do you want more of the same or do you want something new? We understand that Nikki Haley has uh, gone back to her home in South Carolina. Whether that uh, means anything as we uh, start to count up Super Tuesday uh, caucus votes here in Utah and 14 other states. We'll find out and we'll have full coverage for you throughout the day. 609 traffic and weather together brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon and he's back in the traffic center. Tim, some heavier traffic starting to appear on the freeway. I-15 in Midvale, but so far so good on 215. No extra slowing on Bangor or Mountain View yet and watching Tooele County without any weather issues today. Traffic on SR 36 from Tooele City to Lake Point zipping along. Michelle? Well, we're looking at a little bit of busy traffic for driver for people trying to make their way onto Hill Air Force Base. This is at the West Gate, but if you're making your way southbound I-15, going from Marriott Slaterville all the way down into downtown, that's seeing good speeds there as well as Legacy and I-215. Heather? We do have a minor fender bender in Spanish Fork. This is on Main Street underneath the I-15 overpass. It's actually the on-ramp uh, th that'll take you onto I-15, but it's uh, over on the right shoulder, not causing any delays. You still have good speeds on I-15 itself, about 20 minutes, 25 minutes from Springville all the way up to the point of the mountain. Traffic filling in just a little bit in Eagle Mountain and Saratoga Springs, but not enough to cause delays yet on Redwood Road. Is the IRS harassing you? Are tax problems ruining your life? Let Utah Tax Attorney Jordan Wilcox help. Visit TaxHelpUT.com. That's TaxHelpUT.com. Heather Kelly in the KSL Traffic Center. We'll keep it mostly cloudy for this afternoon, high of 47 degrees. Overnight, we'll dip off to 35, which really isn't that cold for this time of year. Mostly cloudy tomorrow, high of 51, and a slight chance for an isolated shower. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. Right now with some clouds in Salt Lake City, it's 32 degrees. I see that Karen Travers is going to jump on with us here in a few minutes. We'll go in depth with uh, the ABC News White House correspondent. The White House is uh, continuing to pressure Hamas to accept a uh, deal, a temporary ceasefire that would uh, begin on Ramadan, which commences at sundown on Sunday, March 10th. We give you the latest on that, plus it sounds like there's more humanitarian drops that are also going to take place, so stay with us. Remember, you'll always find us streaming live at kslnewsradio.com and on the app for KSL News Radio, Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. Had lunch with a buddy the other day who, in the last couple of years, sold a home. He had uh, homes uh, actually side by side, decided to sell one of them off in the Sugar House area, and he... Uh, mentioned that he had some regrets. <laughs> he said, I wish I would have known blank. I wish I could have predicted blank. You don't want to take those kinds of chances or ha have those kinds of questions on the backside of making a deal, whether it's uh, buying or selling a home. And that's why we tell you to go to the Stern team. They've told us that there are over 100 details involving selling a home, and they have a team of people handling every detail to make sure that nothing falls through the cracks. They actually uh, also have over 100 active buyer clients who are looking for a home right now. So if you're looking to sell, they may already have the buyer for you standing by. And they can take care of every detail that you can think of and even some you would not. And they have so many great options for you. Uh, instant cash offers so you can skip the hassles of a traditional sale and close in as little as seven days. You know, maybe you got a job that you uh, just got offered and you don't have time to wait it out in the market. They even have a buy-before-you-sell program. There's so many ways they can help you right now. There are 1,100-plus five-star reviews on their website, which you'll find at sternteam.com or just Google the Stern Team. When you want a brand new kitchen, there's nothing to it. There's a brand new way to do it. 
everyday kitchen and bath. Do you love your house but hate your kitchen? If you want your old kitchen or bath completely new again, totally remodeled and updated to your taste, style, and specifications in just three days, call Three Day Kitchen and Bath. And we mean a complete custom remodel from floor to ceiling in just three days, including a 100% satisfaction guarantee with our quality and craftsmanship where you don't pay. No hassle, no stress. We even bring our mobile showroom to you and you'll be our guest at the Marriott while we work our magic creating your dream kitchen or bath. Call Three Day Kitchen and Bath for your free copy of the Kitchen and Bath Remodeling Guide, plus $500 off a complete bathroom remodel with a kitchen and a free design consultation. It's about time. Three days or less. At Three Day Kitchen and Bath. Hi, this is Doug Ryden, and you know my friends at NPS, before anything even goes out to be sold, it's already marked down 20 to 70 percent off. It is incredible. That's each and every day. And they put new items in every store every day. So you'll have a different experience every time you shop. Now, of course, there's things you can count on in the grocery department, so you can go in there and get the things that you need. But oh my goodness, NPS, which I like to think of as a nice place to save, is really an incredible place. And it's amazing how many people have yet to discover it. One of the best kept secrets in the state of Utah. So get into the NPS store near you. They have four locations. There are two in Salt Lake. One is more general in the groceries and so on. The other is more industrial. In Orem, it's 475 North State Street and in Layton, 1150 North Main Street. You're going to love NPS. It truly is an adventure, a nice place to shop. KSL News Time 615. The three things you need to know this hour. First, a missing Davis County teen is back safe with his family after he sent a secret sign for help. Police accuse an adult of intending to bring that boy to California and harm him. I'm KSL News Radio's Peter Johnston. Second, Utah Clean Energy is working with cities and counties to be better prepared for the growing popularity of electric vehicles. Third, it's traffic and weather together. And right now, the main corridor of I-15 between Ogden and Salt Lake still delay-free, as is uh, your northbound drive. Uh, getting to the freeway, not much of a challenge yet, although more people are certainly out on the roads now. There's just not any big crashes or delays to avoid. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. Mostly cloudy skies today with a high of 47. I'm Matt Johnson. 32 downtown and time for a look at our top national stories. From ABC News. I'm Sherry Preston. Today is Super Tuesday, the biggest day of the GOP presidential nominating contest. ABC national correspondent Stephen Portnoy has more. In all, more than 860 delegates to the national convention will be chosen today, about a third of the total in play. In several of the states, including the largest, California, a candidate who wins more than 50% of the vote will win all of the delegates. If Donald Trump can do that, Super Tuesday will have the frontrunner getting much closer to clinching the nomination. Nikki Haley aims to scoop up delegates where she can in the states where they're assigned proportionally or by congressional district. With more on the prospects of Donald Trump clinching it, here's ABC political director Rick Klein. Right now, he is more than 200 delegates ahead of Nikki Haley. He's still far away from the 1,215 that he needs, but there's 860 on the ballot today alone, so he could get really close. In Texas, a lawsuit has now been filed in the wake of wildfires in the Panhandle. ABC's Maria Villarreal is near Amarillo. A woman suing power company Excel Energy and two other utilities, saying a wooden pole defendants failed to properly inspect snapped off at its base, adding powered utility lines hit the ground, igniting a fire. The cause of the fire is still being investigated. Let's go in depth now. The White House is pressuring Hamas to accept a temporary ceasefire deal with, uh, before Ramadan begins on Sunday. Joining me live, ABC News White House correspondent uh, Karen Travers. Is there any agreement on either side for uh, this timeline? Yeah, so we don't know a lot of the details of what's on the table. The White House has been very cautious over the past couple of weeks, but certainly through all of these conversations, going back to that first uh, week-long ceasefire, about not getting public about what is on the table and where things stand in the progress of negotiations. Just saying, you know, these are very fragile, they're very sensitive, and they don't want to say or do anything that could jeopardize any progress. The White House does say that they're certainly hopeful that they can get closer and maybe reach a deal by the start of Ramadan next week. And that's the goal here. That's what they'd like to see get done. Uh, but, you know, they're pushing... 
Hamas on this, saying Israel has put forward what John Kirby called a forward-leaning deal on the table, and they've made an offer, and the onus is on Hamas to accept it. Remember, the president had said last week he thought by yesterday they would have wrapped this up and reached a deal for what the White House hopes is a longer ceasefire of six weeks for this temporary pause. Uh, That did not happen, so now they're pushing on this to happen by the end of this week. That prediction by uh, President Biden that you know, a deal mm-hmm. could possibly be reached by yesterday, uh, kind of took Netanyahu by surprise, it didn't did. it? It did. It did. That's what Israeli sources were telling us. Uh, publicly, the Israeli government never you know, weighed in explicitly on what the president had said, but it was notable that he was really the only one who was being that optimistic about it. He said that he had spoken to his national security advisor about it, and that's where he was getting the sense of the timeline. But by the end of the week, when people were saying, you know, what about that Monday uh, goal that you had laid out? He said, you know, hope springs eternal, but he didn't think it was likely they were going to hit it. Now here we are a week later, a couple days later from when he had last said that, and the White House is still saying they're hopeful. But, you know, they really do feel that there is a time crunch here of trying to get this done by the start of next week. I know we've got to let you go in about 30 seconds. Uh, The Mm -hmm. airdrops over the weekend were really something to see, and it sounds like that's only the beginning. It is. And in fact, we just got word, our Pentagon reporter just emailed minutes ago saying that CENTCOM tells us that you, the U.S. and Jordan uh, had C-130s carrying out another airdrop of food over northern Gaza just a short time ago. 36,800 meal equivalents in northern Gaza were dropped in. This follows the 38,000 MREs that were dropped on Saturday. Karen, thank you. As always, ABC News White House correspondent Karen Travers helping us out on the in-depth at uh, 15 and 45. 619, time for a look at the drive with traffic and weather together. Brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. Here again is Andy Farnsworth. And the drive still clear through the valley on I-15. It's getting pretty heavy in Midvale, but it's moving at the full speed limit. Redwood's starting to look a lot heavier at the intersections from Sandy or uh, from West Jordan up into Taylorsville. Uh, but coming out of Tooele, you're still clear on I-80 and SR-36. Michelle? Well, we're looking at some slowing starting to build. This is on 31st Street in the Ogden area. This is between Pennsylvania Avenue and I-15. For drivers on Wall Avenue, also a little slowing there around 30th Street. Now, if you're on I-15 itself, seeing good speeds from Ogden all the way into downtown. Heather? We're starting to see a bit of congestion now at the larger intersections coming out of Eagle Mountain and Saratoga Springs. So you might be stopped for a while and backing up at Cedar Fort Road and 800 North as well as on Saratoga Road and 2100 North trying to get onto Redwood Road. But I-15 still has the majority of your traffic and northbounders are still about 20, maybe 25 minutes from Spanish Fork up to the point of the mountain. Come explore Logan, hit the slopes, or rent snowmobiles. See a live performance, catch the Cache Valley Cowboy Rendezvous, March 14th through the 17th with Western music, cowboy poetry, and dances. ExploreLogan.com. Heather Kelly in the KSL Traffic Center. KSL 7-day forecast keeps the clouds around for the next few days. Mostly cloudy today, 47. 51 tomorrow, mostly cloudy. Slight chance for an isolated shower. Better chance for scattered rain snow showers on Thursday, 45 the high. We drop down to 42, partly cloudy on Friday. Sunny on Saturday, 50 degrees, 54 we're rebounding, partly cloudy on Sunday. And then it's 57 with a mix of sun and clouds on Monday. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. 32 degrees in downtown Salt Lake City and the seven-day forecast brought to you by Performance Automotive Bountiful. It is Super Tuesday, and although we'll have uh, coverage throughout the day today, David Dujanovic, uh, certainly Maria will be talking about it on Utah's New News, and then uh, Boyd Mathis, and I just want to remind you to make sure you're listening on your way home today, as we hope you do every day with Jeff Kaplan's Afternoon News. He'll be uh, with you starting at 3, but at 5 o'clock, we uh, lock things down for wall-to-wall coverage of Utah's Super Tuesday Caucus and bring you four hours of coverage uh, beginning at 5 o'clock and then continuing uh, until 9 this evening. Also want to remind you tomorrow at this time, we'll be talking about results from not just here in Utah, but all across the country. The best Super Tuesday coverage is found right here on KSL News Radio. I lock up my Old Spice Fiji Aluminum Free Dry Spray to keep that 24-7 lasting freshness safe for myself. Fresh coconuts, palm trees in the wind. It's like catching waves in Fiji. 
Actually, I just talked myself into a refreshing spritz of Fiji. My old spice is missing! No! <laughs> Without the ones like you, who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional grade industrial supplies. Count on real time product availability and fast delivery. Call clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. A happy place comes in many colors. Whatever your color, bring happiness home with Serta Pro Painters and make your happy place your home. Serta Pro Painters, that's painting happy. During our spring sales event, special offers are available through April 30th. Schedule your home painting project today and bring happiness home. Each Serta Pro Painters business is independently owned and operated. Contractor license and registration information is available at certapro.com. It already feels like home. Do you know the secret to losing up to one pound of fat every day? At slcfatloss.com, we know the secret. Our unique weight loss program makes it easy to lose weight, get healthy, and get your energy back naturally, safely, and effectively. If you'd like to lose unhealthy fat without counting points, no exercising, no prepackaged meals, no surgery, and no injections with the risk of serious side effects, go to slcfatloss.com now to schedule your free consultation in person or virtually. I'm Dave Noriega, and when I heard from Salt Lake City Fat loss that I could lose 20 to 30 pounds in just a month or two, I thought they were crazy. But in 30 days, I've lost 30 pounds. Find out for yourself. 801-450-1882. You can get a free consultation at slcfatloss.com. Many clients lose 20 to 30 pounds in about a month or two. That's up to a pound per day. For your free private weight loss consultation, call 801-450-1882 or go to slcfatloss.com. That's slcfatloss.com. Results may vary. Watching Utah's Money brought to you by Trajan Wealth, your trusted local fiduciary advisors, TrajanWealth.com. Half of Americans who applied for loans in the past two years were turned down, according to a new survey by Bankrate. The survey says people are most often uh, reporting getting denied for credit cards or a credit limit increase. Li Zhang says that uh, China aims to achieve 5% economic growth this year. In an annual address, Lee outlined plans to boost spending by developing technology and fortifying the military. China's economy grew at 5.2% pace last year. And there's a new trend on TikTok. Healthcare workers' selfies are reportedly being used on the app to sell unproven medical treatments. For example, one ER nurse's likeness was taken from her social media without her permission to sell a product called Miracle Moo a uh, supplement made with cow colostrum. Your money at this moment, the uh, market starting the day in the red. We actually ended there yesterday down just a bit. The Dow is off another quarter of a percent, uh, represented by a loss of 96 points. The S&P is down 15 and a quarter, and the NASDAQ closing in on about a half a percentage point loss here, down near 100. Traffic filling in now on 31st Street in Ogden, just west of I-15. But uh, we've had good flow of it so far. Traffic and weather together, coming up. What would you say if I told you you could get a free furnace? What's up, everybody? I'm Mike Wilson with Any Hour Services, and I hope you'd at least say, tell me more. Now, before you get too excited, let me explain how this works and why we do our free furnace sale. We feel like we've got the best HVAC techs around and we want to keep them. But the only way we can do that is if they're working and providing for their families, so we set money aside for this free furnace sale. We're only able to give you this great deal because you're helping us keep our guys busy. It's actually great if you've been thinking about replacing both your furnace and air conditioner because when you have any hour services install a new air conditioner, we'll give you a new furnace for just the cost to install it. About 400 bucks. The furnace is free. You just pay the labor. All you have to do is call any hour services by March 31st to schedule a free estimate. One of our HVAC supervisors will come to your home and explain all the details. If you think you might be interested, call any hour services today and schedule your free estimate. 801-443-7400. You can Google Any Hour Services. You can even schedule online at anyhourservices.com. 
No one helps more homeowners than any hour services. Today's vote may seal the race for president. Two major parties in Utah are taking opposite approaches. Democrats will have a primary election. The United Utah Party and American Independent Party will also be having their caucuses. It all begins by showing up. Caucus night is the opportunity to do that. Super Tuesday. 16 states and territories vote and more than a thousand delegates are awarded. Listen for special coverage today. Today. Plus get analysis and reaction all day tomorrow. tomorrow. Utah's Super Tuesday Caucus on KSL News Radio. KSL News Time now 629. Traffic and weather together. Brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. Hill Air Force Base starting to back up a little bit. Maybe they're in the Ogden area, Andy. Yeah, we get uh, that around uh, different times of the morning. Uh, it's not as bad as it gets on some uh, days. But right now, if you're traveling in Salt Lake County, the freeways uh, from Draper to Salt Lake are just fine. And heavy traffic is starting to appear on Bangor coming up on the 201 freeway. Michelle? Well, we're still seeing good speeds for drivers if you're making your way from Layton all the way down to Salt Lake, seeing good speeds there, as well as I-215 and Legacy. Heather? No delays yet trying to get to the Park City Ski Resorts, but traffic definitely filling in both on I-80 over the summit and trying to exit at Kimball Junction and Silver Creek Junction, that's US-40. Otherwise, you've got a pretty good drive. No accidents reported there. Pretty much the same story in Utah County. Traffic is filling in, especially on the west side of I-15 near Saratoga Springs, but I-15 at speed all the way to the point of the mountain. Now is the time for a gorgeous new Nielsen home. Beautiful move-in ready townhomes to Rambler communities, maintenance free for all life stages. See what's new for you at nielsenhomes.com. Heather Kelly in the KSL Traffic Center. 47 eventually this afternoon and uh, one, two, three, four of the next six days will be in the 50s. The warmest of those coming on Monday when we top out at 57, tomorrow 51. But the chance of rain and snow continuing through Thursday actually looks like uh, to start the morning on Thursday we may have rain or rain mixed with snow to start the day. But right now just cloudy and 32 degrees. You're listening to Utah's Morning News with Tim Hughes and Amanda Dixon on KSL News Radio, 102.7 FM and 1160 AM. Good morning. KSL News Time is 6:30 and our top story this half hour, a Davis County teen is back with his family after police say he was taken by an adult and sent a secret signal for help. KSL News Radio's Peter Johnston has more for us live. Peter Tim, police found the missing 14-year-old boy in a West Bountiful hotel room with four adult men on Sunday. The way officers knew something was wrong was that the teen had changed his voicemail. He and his family had agreed to use that as a red flag, and later he shared his location. The Davis County Sheriff's Office tells KSL TV they questioned all four adult men and let three go. The last was a 36-year-old man from California who says he met the boy online and intended to take him back to his home state. He's in jail. Police say this is an important reminder that families should prepare safety signals just in case. Reporting live, Peter Johnston, KSL News Radio. The two victims were identified after uh, the shooting at Varex Imaging uh, Headquarters. Their CEO, Sonny Saniel, says it's a sad day for the company. We felt that it was critical that the business stay open to allow employees to come together, avoid isolation, lean on one another. On-site counseling will be available for other employees, and police believe the shooter turned the gun on himself. A Utah woman is suing Salt Lake County after, uh, along with several people associated with the Salt Lake County Metro Jail, over what she claims was the preventable death of her late husband. KSL News Radio's Becky Bruce has the latest live. Becky? Tim, Amy Baker's lawsuit claims her six foot two husband, Leland Cropper, weighed just 128 pounds when he was booked two years ago. And over the course of five years, she five days rather, she claims he lost more than 15 pounds and was reporting symptoms including nausea, pain, and vomiting. The lawsuit claims his death should have been prevented if jail officials had sought more medical care for him while he was in obvious distress. Baker is asking for damages to be determined by a jury. Live, Becky Bruce, KSL News Radio. KSL's top national stories this hour. Voters in Colorado casting ballots less than 24 hours after the Supreme Court ruled that former President Donald Trump must remain on the ballot. The justices unanimously overruled the state's Supreme Court decision that disqualified him for engaging in the January 6th insurrection. ABC News legal consultant Kate Shaw says the speed of the high court's decision could set a precedent when it takes up his immunity trial. 
It was about three and a half weeks between the argument in the Colorado case and the decision we got yesterday. So if the court wants to, it could move just as quickly, maybe faster in the immunity case, which I think has actually a simpler set of legal issues. The trial is set for late April. Tuesday, of course, today is Super Tuesday. 800 delegate spots will be decided from 15 states and one territory. KSL at night's Mara Carabello says Utah has not always been a part of Super Tuesday. A decade ago, we had all the western states. The west coast states are going to band together, and all the media attention is going to be on Nevada, New Mexico, Utah, Colorado, Wyoming. Utah participated in Super Tuesday in 2008 and 2020. Six bills surrounding the uh, federal budget went through committee on Capitol Hill, and Congresswoman Celeste Malloy sat down with KSL to discuss how they benefit Utah. One of the things I worked really hard on was to get some uh, funding in there for some of these rural infrastructure projects, like culinary water systems in Marysville and Lyman and Monroe. These and other towns don't have the tax base they need to update their water systems. The dates have been set for state and congressional debates here in Utah. Things kick off with the gubernatorial debate on September 23rd at Salt Lake Community College. Senate and several House candidates will uh, debate at Utah State coming up in October. And Nicholas Rossi will be back in court today. He's facing several charges after faking his death and fleeing the country to avoid rape charges. He still insists he's not Rossi and has been mistakenly extradited. Time again for First Look Traffic. Andy, how are things? Well, we haven't had any big crashes yet this morning. That's good news. Uh, the weather's not a factor this morning. That's better news, especially for drivers in Ogden and Tooele and down in Utah counties. But uh, through the rest of the drive, your city streets, more traffic uh, starting to get out on the roads, but hasn't translated into any big delays. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. Utah Clean Energy is working with several cities to prepare for the influx of electric vehicles. According to Kelby Gopal with Utah Clean Energy, EV ready ordinances require that a certain percentage of parking spots in multifamily buildings be equipped with the right infrastructure to install EV chargers. Salt Lake City last year passed an EV readiness ordinance that requires 20% of parking spaces in new multifamily housing to be EV ready. So that was really a great step for Salt Lake City and created, I think, a lot of momentum and interest among other local governments who want to do the same thing. She says there are estimates that by 2030, 50 percent of new car sales will be electric vehicles, which will mean greater demand for places to charge all those EVs. Don Brinkerhoff, KSL News Radio. Park City leaders are looking for ways to help its workforce afford housing in town, according to the Salt Lake Tribune. It's the only Utah city with a bigger workforce than the number of residents, and Zillow reports the median rent there is over $4,000 a month. The city council is now looking at building more dorm-style housing to accommodate the thousands of people who commute into work every day. Salt Lake City leaders trying to protect and reuse the city's historic buildings. KSL News Radio's Alessandra Gurr has the details. This proposal, initiated by Salt Lake City Mayor Aaron Mendenhall, would alter some zoning barriers and change building requirements to allow more historic buildings to be preserved and used rather than demolished. Deputy Planning Director with the Salt Lake Planning Commission, Michaela Oakde, says one of these changes would help create more residential buildings. The current process is really limited. The process with the landmark structures right now, it pretty much just allows non-residential uses. The proposal was passed unanimously by the Planning Commission and will be heard by the Salt Lake City Council this week. Alessandra Gurr, KSL News Radio. And the parents of an eight-year-old boy who died after falling off a playground slide are suing the school district for $90,000. Dallin Cunningham died last year at a Tooele Elementary School. His parents say the school was negligent for allowing a slide on the playground. The uh, free freeways and secondary routes have been in pretty good shape this morning. Mountain View Corridor getting a little busier, though, as it approaches Redwood Road. We'll have another look at traffic and weather together in just a minute. It's do or die for Nikki Haley. I'm willing to take the cuts because I think good things come when you go through the pain. Special coverage all day today and tomorrow with results and election night coverage starting today at 5 on KSL News Radio. Rick at LoansByRick.com has some important information for anyone in Utah and Idaho who's thinking of buying a house. Do it now. Don't wait until summer because home prices in those two states will likely increase by 10 to 20% due to in-migration from California and other states. 
That means a house that costs 400,000 right now will go up by 40 to 80 grand with multiple offers. Interest rates may drop later in the year, possibly to the 6% range, but the increased cost of the home will mean that your monthly payments will go up by a lot. So start looking and buy now. Refinance when the interest rates go down. Waiting to buy your home will only hurt you in the long run. For more details and buying strategies, call Rick at loansbyrick.com right now. 801-809-SAVE. Rick can evaluate your situation and get you on the path to buying a home today. 801-809-SAVE or click loansbyrick.com. Rick Kirschbaum, NMLS 241179 and Vintage Lending, NMLS 287106 are equal housing lenders. Some restrictions apply. Amco presents Bet You Didn't Know. Bet you didn't know that your car's transmission is made up of 800 pieces. Also, bet you didn't know that Amco's fixed over 40 million transmissions and that Amco offers a nationwide warranty. Check out Amco's multiple financing options so you can fix it fast and pay it off slow. That's Amco, double A, MCO. All in together now, we can make it better, can we do it? We do it. We won't be done. Because we know how to jump. Moving and eating better every day can help make you and your kids healthier. Search We Can online to find out more. A message from the Ad Council, HHS, and NIH's We Can program. We're happy to report this morning that a Davis County teen is back with his family after uh, police say he was taken by an adult. But the way that he was found and the uh, red flag that he waved to his family is really a lesson for all of us to learn. He changed his voicemail message, which sent a signal, something they had talked about uh, within their family, that sent a signal to the family that he was in some sort of distress. Uh, Peter Johnston is going to follow up on that story this morning. It's 6.39. Time for us to get a look at the drive again, brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. Looks like freeway speeds to me, Andy. Yep, and it's been pretty good shape this morning, especially with road conditions being better out in Tooele County. The SR36 drive is without any slowing uh, all the way on to uh, I-80. It's a little bit heavy in Lake Point right before the merge. Bangot are filling in now in parts of Taylorsville and West Valley, 47th, 35th, 21st South, all those intersections. You might have to wait through one light cycle. Michelle? Looking at a little bit of slowing, this is 31st Street in Ogden if you're trying to get onto I-15, but again, running at posted speeds, I-15 from Salt, from uh, Ogden all the way into Salt Lake City. Looking good also if you're trying to make your way south on Legacy or I-215's West Belt. Heather? It's a much better drive for Springville drivers this morning than it was yesterday. First of all, you've got dry road conditions and there are no crashes right now as you head north from Spanish Fork up into Provo Orem area. In fact, it's going to take you about 20 to 25 minutes all the way to the point of the mountain. Now, traffic is starting to fill in, especially getting busier at the bigger intersections out in Saratoga Springs. So for people trying to get onto Redwood Road and head north into Salt Lake Valley, that's where you're going to see most of the traffic. But no problem right now getting to and from Park City. Save up to 20 cents off per gallon using Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Find a Sinclair station, store amenities, purchase history, and enjoy a simple, secure way to pay for fuel. Download the free app today. Heather Kelly in the KSL Traffic Center. Mostly cloudy skies today with a high of 47. Overnight, we keep the clouds around and milder overnight lows in the mid-30s. For tomorrow, 51, mostly cloudy, and a slight chance for an isolated shower. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. Right now in Salt Lake City, uh, clouds and 32 degrees. Well, the uh, legislative session finally came to an end on Friday, right at midnight, as a matter of fact. But this battle over transparency and accountability from the Salt Lake City uh, DA's office has really taken on a continued life of its own. We're going to go in depth on that coming up in just a few minutes with the help of KSL TV's Daniel Woodruff. Right now, though, it is time for Jeff Kaplan's Minute of News, and it's brought to you by the law offices of Jordan Wilcox. When we build like mad, as we're doing up and down the Wasatch Front, you get unintended consequences. Like in downtown Salt Lake, where they're building a 31-story skyscraper with a facade covered in slats. We learned on Saturday when the wind kicked up, the building whistles. Listen. Cool feature, or annoying, 
I guess it depends if you live next door. Another unintended consequence of construction, as the wind was howling in Eagle Mountain, tumbleweeds rolled off the open range, bouncing and dancing their way into a newer subdivision. Maybe you've seen the video of hundreds of these spindly four-foot balls making a beeline for one lovely house as if it was a magnet. You can see tons of them just blowing up and over the backs of all the houses. For about 20 minutes or so, I just kept pouring in from the field behind us, basically and just piling up everywhere. The entire lawn is covered by tumbleweeds 12 feet deep. And afterward, the mess was covered by four inches of snow. So how do you clean that up? Pitchforks and plastic bag? A chipper shredder and a shovel? I don't know, but I do know construction always brings surprises. And as we learned this weekend, sometimes those unintended consequences blow in on a stiff breeze and a song. Minute of News, only on KSL News Radio. Jeff Kaplan's Minute brought to you by Jordan Wilcox. IRS harassing you? The law offices of Jordan Wilcox can help. Visit taxhelput.com. Back in 2004, got a letter from the IRS indicating that I was no longer married and therefore they were to change my filing status to single. We were, we were really upset. I'm Utah tax attorney Jordan Wilcox. Listen to what actual clients have had to say about working with us. As soon as we met Jordan and he started talking to us, he, number one, he made us feel like we weren't the imbeciles that the IRS had made us feel like for so many years. I'm Jordan Wilcox. Let's solve your IRS tax nightmare. We have reduced our tax liability by over 42 thousand dollars. Visit TaxHelpUT.com or call 801-657-5951 to schedule your free consultation today. We can move forward with confidence and assurance that we're okay. That's TaxHelpUT.com. It's marvelous. Just marvelous. KSL News Time 645. The three things you need to know this hour. First, a Utah woman is suing Salt Lake County and several people connected to the Salt Lake County Metro Jail over the in custody death of her husband. I'm KSL News Radio's Becky Bruce. Second Super Tuesday will keep voters busy today. Registered Democrats will have a traditional primary, and Republicans are gathering at a caucus later tonight. Third, it's traffic and weather together. I 15, traffic is still at the full speed limit, whether you're starting out in Ogden and heading south, Provo heading north. Either direction is just fine. It's Bangor that's starting to get pretty heavy, as is Mountain View in the intersections through north uh, northbound through West Valley. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. Lots of clouds for the next few days and slight rain and snow chances. I'm Matt Johnson. Right now in Salt Lake City, 32 degrees with a quick look at our top national stories. ABC News, I'm Sherry Preston. Today is Super Tuesday. Voters in 15 states casting ballots in the Republican primary. Donald Trump still far ahead of Nikki Haley. However, says ABC's Ike Jachi. At a rally in Texas last night, Haley insisted she's the only Republican who can beat President Biden. Republicans lost a vote on Mayorkas. They lost a vote on Israel. The RNC chair lost her job. And Donald Trump had his fingerprints on all of it. At some point, maybe we should say the reason that America keeps losing is because of Donald Trump. It remains unclear what Haley will do next. She has no public event scheduled today, not even an election night party. She's expected to watch tonight's results privately at home. The Biden administration announcing a rule to cap all credit card late fees at $8, the latest effort to push back on what the White House calls junk fees. Three days of negotiations with Hamas over a ceasefire in Gaza ending today without a breakthrough. They were hoping to reach a deal before Ramadan this weekend. This is ABC News. Time for the KSL in depth. The legislative session ended on a heated note as Republican lawmakers called for more accountability from Salt Lake City DA Sim Gill. KSL TV's Daniel Woodruff has the story. As Utah tries to woo an NHL team to downtown Salt Lake, lawmakers say they want to guarantee the capital city is ready. One of the biggest complaints I've heard from business owners and citizens in this area is that there are many people walking around in Salt Lake City who are criminals and they're not being prosecuted. Republican legislators blame Democratic Salt Lake County District Attorney Sim Gill. There needs to be some level of accountability in our capital city for the prosecution of crime 
when it is not appropriately prosecuted. Senate Bill 273 requires Gill's office to report how his prosecutors spend their time in 15-minute increments. It also allows the governor or the group overseeing revitalizing downtown to recommend that the Utah Supreme Court remove Gill and replace him. This is a vindictive bill. And I'm offended right now. Democrats argue it will burden Gill's office and lead prosecutors to quit. They also blasted Republicans for targeting Gill while only censuring embattled state school board member Natalie Klein over her social media post about a high school athlete. I think we ought to be ashamed of ourselves trying to go after an elected official, but yet we stood on his body for and let another elected official get away with, with, with going after a child. This is a disgrace. Sim Gill declined an interview request, but told KSL, we are looking into the effects of the bill. It is not law until the governor signs it. Earlier last week, he told legislators his office is short-staffed. I agree we don't have those sufficient resources. So we don't need to go through a study. I can confirm that. He argued the bill is pointless unless the state wants to help him fill the gap. One Republican responded this way. The lack of resources in any area could be covered by maybe a little more efficiency. Of course, the thing we're waiting on now is uh, the governor's signature on uh, many of these bills. The governor's office does say he has not reviewed that particular bill yet. That's a big job after the uh, legislature finally or le legislative session finally comes to a close. And that is the in-depth this half hour at uh, 15 and 45. 649 traffic and weather together brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. And if you're already making your way in, Andy's got an eye on your drive. And traffic is slowing just a tiny bit on I-15 now approaching 53rd South. You've got uh, increasing delays at Mountain View and 3500 South, Bangor and 4700 South. But only those intersections. The rest of them, you should be okay uh, on the west side this morning. 201, uh, or excuse me, I-80 coming out of Tooele County, a 10-minute drive from Lake Point to the airport. Michelle? Well, the delays on 31st Street and Ogden, those have eased nicely. If you're making way southbound, I-15, again, smooth sailing from Ogden all the way to downtown. See a little bit of bog down traffic, though. This is on Beck Street and Victory Road approaching uh, Highway 89. Heather? We've got a lot of delays all of a sudden on Mountain View Corridor. This is as you come around the curve and head east toward Redwood Road. So it looks like that light has turned uh, red for a lot of people, and they're backing up around the, cur the curve uh, that takes you out of Saratoga Springs area. Redwood Road itself, though, still in pretty good shape as you head north toward the Salt Lake County, but you will see a bit of backup at Porter Rockwell Boulevard. I-15, though, still at speed the entire stretch from Springville to Point of the Mountain. Advanced Window Products offers Graber window covers, high-end quality with the best warranty. Save 30% off when you mention KSL. 801-850-9100 or advancedwindows.com. Heather Kelly in the KSL Traffic Center. KSL 7-day forecast starts out with a high of 47 today with mostly cloudy skies. Keeping the clouds around for tomorrow, a slight chance for an isolated shower, high of 51 degrees. 45, chance for rain snow showers on Thursday, then drying out Friday, partly cloudy, high of 42. Time to rebound with high pressure, Saturday sunny, 50. 54 on Sunday goes to 57, partly cloudy skies on Monday. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. Yeah, this whiplash weather is really getting to me. We had uh, the crazy winds and snow over the weekend, and then we're going to be back knocking on the door of 60 by Monday all over again. Right now, it is uh, 32 degrees. A couple of teens out there this morning, Logan 19, uh, Park City 17. The seven-day forecast brought to you by Performance Automotive Bountiful. Well, on the strength of a couple of uh, wins... One over TCU at home, and then the other, of course, on the road against Kansas. The Cougs sneak back into the uh, top 25. They landed at number, let me see, landed at number 20 this week. Not far behind them, uh, number 22, Utah State. But uh, the Cougs are back at it tomorrow. Uh, the other thing this poll showed is that Iowa State is moved up two notches from number eight to number six in the top 25. That's where they're headed next. It just doesn't get any easier in the Big 12. We'll have the uh, pregame for you tomorrow night at 6, the tip off at 7, here on the home of the Cougars, KSL News Radio.
Hey, if you've struggled in your life to uh, lose weight, or as we've learned from a lot of our listeners, uh, they've actually lost weight plenty of times. It's just the fact that they get that weight back. And you're looking for uh, a final answer to changing the way you address food, the way you look at food, uh, the way a food affects your life. Then let us tell you that Soda Weight Loss can help you too. You've heard Amanda talk about her weight loss. I've shared my daughter's story of losing 42 pounds on the Soda Weight Loss program. And the difference is that you have that support, even if you're a single individual who doesn't have a significant other or support or other people in the family or eating whatever they want and that makes it tough for you, you've got a nutritionist and a dietitian right there at your fingertips to help you every step of the way. And that is a difference maker for you. But they teach you all the little things, how often you should eat, how much you should eat, some of the brands that maybe you uh, need to take off of your menu because if they have so much hidden sugars in them, there's a lot to learn. But if you really want to get this weight off and keep this weight off, then you need to find out more by going to SotaWeightLoss.com. It is spelled S-O-T-A, and it stands for State of the Art. Gillette Heating and Air Conditioning is offering furnace maintenance for 30% off. Call 385-GET-HEAT today to take advantage of this limited-time offer. Carrier, turn to the experts. Only one type of burger. For every pallet. Fries are extra. Large in size. We've got the shakes. Going over the brim. Hey, this is Chris from JCW's. Put a positive, delicious spin on your day at any one of our five locations. In Lehigh, American Fork, Provo, South Jordan, or Harriman. JCW's, quality and a lot of it. Inside Sources with Boyd Matheson. When we're trying to digest the news of the day, we have to remember that instant certainty is the enemy of truth. A flashy headline may distract you from the real issue and the important conversations underneath. Inside Sources with Boyd Matheson, 1 to 3 on KSL News Radio. Watching the Child's Money this morning is brought to you by Trajan Wealth, your trusted local fiduciary advisors, TrajanWealth.com. Well, Jeff Bezos has reclaimed the title of the richest person on the planet, dethroning Elon Musk. The Bloomberg Billionaires Index says last year Bezos gained $23 billion while Musk lost $31 billion. Whole Foods is launching what they call a quick shop format to extend their services to urban neighborhoods. This is called the Whole Foods Market Daily Shop, and each shop, we are told, will be smaller but will include basically everything a standard Whole Foods has. The venture is set to start in New York City. And some former Twitter executives are suing Elon Musk, saying that they were entitled to more than $128 million in unpaid severance. They say they were fired without reason when Musk acquired Twitter in 2022. Musk and his team haven't yet responded to that lawsuit. Your money at this moment. Uh, Let's first look at how we ended the day yesterday. We were down across the board. The Dow was off about 100. The NASDAQ was down 68. The S&P was down just a tenth, about six points. But just ahead of the bell uh, this morning, coming up in about 35 minutes, the uh, Dow is down another 144. The S&P is down four-tenths of a percent, or 22 points, and the NASDAQ this hour off by 122 points. Been a good day so far on the roads. I-15, however, starting to fill in, and that means some slower speeds northbound at the uh, south interchange. Don't think that's because of an accident, but we'll check. Next. Derek Overstreet, founder of the New Millennium Group. We're a financial planning firm. Listen, we're fiduciaries. We have advisors standing by right now to take your call. That's 888-999-6370. 888-999-6370. The reason you're going to want to call is we're going to help you retire three to five years before you thought possible. Now, imagine how that would be if you could actually retire three to five years sooner than your plan was. The way we do this is by putting together a step-by-step plan, taking into consideration any rental properties that you have, any pension income that you have, your social security. Listen, we put that all together for you in writing. It will allow us to, to build your income based on inflation. You know, inflation has been rapidly rising. You and I both need a plan plan that whatever we start out our income at in five or 10 years, we're going to need 40% more income. So if you're one of those people listening and you'd like a plan in writing, give us a call at 888-999-6370. That's 888-999-6370 or go to utahsfinancialplanner.com. Jeff Kaplan. 
I'm energized by breaking news. First of all, because it's right now, and second of all, because in many cases, the audience needs to know. There's no more important service that we can provide, and I find it critically important to get more details to the audience as quickly as possible. There's nothing more energizing than that for me. Not at all. The most important thing we do is breaking news. I am gratified that so many people listen to me every afternoon on KSL, but what they don't know is that there are so many people behind the scenes making it happen, checking on the traffic, answering the phones, making the calls, talking to the newsmakers. They're out in the street, into the field to get the raw information and then putting it all together so that I can sit in front of a microphone and be a source of information every afternoon. But there are so many people who make it happen. That's what you don't know. Ride home with Jeff Kaplan. We Days, 3 to 7 on KSL News Radio. At KSL News Radio, we have a 30 year legacy of honoring Utah teachers, but we can't do it without your help. Please tell us about an important teacher in your life on the KSL Teacher Tribute Wall presented by Cypress Credit Union. Each month, one lucky teacher wins a $500 gift card from Cypress Credit Union, a $250 gift card to Harmons, plus season tickets to Hale Center Theater. Say thanks to your teacher today at kslnewsradio.com slash teacher from Cypress Credit Union and KSL News Radio. Coming up on 659, traffic and weather together. Again, brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. Did I hear, Andy, things are starting to slow down just a little bit? Yeah, a little bit on the west side. Mountain View and Bangor are both going to see some backups at uh, intersections, especially 3500 south. Also seeing uh, traffic increasing into the construction on 4700 south near I-215 in Taylorsville. But I-15 still clear from Draper to Salt Lake. 20-minute travel time. Michelle? Well, we're still looking at about a 34-minute travel time if you're making way from Ogden all the way into Salt Lake southbound I-15. Still seeing good speeds if you're on Legacy or I-215's West Belt. Heather? Our biggest delays in Utah County are actually on Mountain View Corridor. It's where it makes the curve around from Saratoga Spring and heads east toward Redwood Road, which then turns into 2100 North. That's where you've got most of your delays right now, but traffic definitely filling in on the other city streets, especially coming out of Eagle Mountain. Northbound I-15, though, still at speed. Revere Health encourages you to schedule your preventative care and annual checkups to help increase the potential to live your most healthy and active life. Revere Health, your partner in health, your partner in life. Heather Kelly in the KSL Traffic Center. Four of the next seven days actually have a slight chance of precipitation, including today when it will be a 30% chance. Expecting a high of 47, there'll be some sunshine poking out of those clouds later in the afternoon. Right now, 32 degrees in Salt Lake City. KSL FM Midvale. KSL Salt Lake City. From the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios, this is KSL News Radio. Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. It's 7 o'clock on Utah's Morning News. Good morning. I'm Tim Hughes, Amanda Dixon with the morning off. And our top story today, of course, is Super Tuesday. And the candidates are looking, uh, doing their part to get voters pumped. Go out and vote. Roughly a third of the delegates in the presidential race for both parties are up for grabs. That includes a slice of the delegate pie right here in Utah. Our live team coverage, Utah Super Tuesday Caucus, begins with KSL News Radio's Becky Bruce at the elections desk this morning. Becky? Tim, voters will cast ballots from Maine to Alaska. On Rumble last night, former President Donald Trump saying you cannot underscore the importance of today. It's so important because we have to send a signal, you know, November 5th, is going to be, I think, the most important day in the history of our country because that's the election, and we're going to take our country back. South Carolina's Nikki Haley has promised to stay in the race as long as she can remain competitive. Today could be a big test of that promise. But we may not actually know the answers today. We have results coming in from every time zone in the continental U.S., the first polls closing about 5 p.m. in Virginia and Vermont. Utah Republicans won't even start counting their caucus results until 8 o'clock tonight. Our live team coverage continues now with KSL News Radio's Amy Kobabe. It's all about dialogue, according to GOP Chair Robert Axon. The caucus meeting is only there to facilitate the conversations that come from all of our citizens and the opinions that come from all of our Republican citizens here in Utah. But it's not just the opportunity to debate. Everyone who goes tonight will take part in a presidential preference poll so Republicans can choose between former President Trump and Nikki Haley, and national delegates will use that then to inform their decision at the upcoming convention. Locations for all parties caucusing 
discussing tonight are listed on our website at kslnewsradio.com. Amy Kobabe, KSL News Radio. Super Tuesday, of course, also our top national story. Former President Donald Trump appears to be close to sealing the deal for a third Republican nomination. But Nikki Haley says don't count her out just yet. At a rally in Texas last night, Haley insisted she's the only Republican who can beat President Biden. Republicans lost a vote on Mayorkas. They lost a vote on Israel. The RNC chair lost her job. And Donald Trump had his fingerprints on all of it. At some point, maybe we should say the reason that America keeps losing is because of Donald Trump. It remains unclear what Haley will do next. She has no public events scheduled today, not even an election night party. She's expected to watch tonight's results privately at home. That's ABC's Ike Jachi. The Biden administration today is making good on a promise to reduce or cut the late penalties charged by credit card companies. The typical credit card late fee costs consumers $32. The president just cut that to 8 The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau finalizing a rule that says it will save American families $10 billion a year in late fees or about $220 per family if they don't pay their statements by their due date. Credit card companies fought to stop the new rule, saying it will force them to raise interest rates. That's ABC's Andy Field. An abortion pill case launches in the Supreme Court later this month, and Utah's Attorney General is one of the people urging justices to close access to the pill. KSL News Radio's Peter Johnston is live with the details. Peter? Tim, Sean Reyes and 21 other attorneys general are arguing in a friend of the court brief that the Food and Drug Administration overstepped when it approved the abortion pill Mifepristone. The core of their argument is that federal agencies like the FDA are inherently threatening the U.S. Constitution's balance of powers and the ability of states to set their own rules. In this case, they argue the court should challenge the agency's ability to act on abortion pill access. That's just one of a blizzard of briefs, though, coming from members of Congress and other attorneys general. We're not going to hear much more until justices start their oral arguments on March 26th. Reporting live from the streets of Salt Lake City, Peter Johnston, KSL News Radio. A birth control medication that's been on the market for decades is about to become available over the counter. The company that makes O Pill, Perigo, says it should hit stores later this month. ABC's Sony Salzman says it's uh, being viewed as a game changer for women's health. The idea here is that by making this medication available over the counter, it will be easier for people to get and that many more people will be able to start taking birth control. And that could be really impactful for people who, for whatever reason, um, are kind of stumped by that barrier of getting a prescription. So the idea is to expand access here and expand access dramatically. The FDA cleared last summer or declared last summer that O-Pill is safe and effective for use without a prescription. Let's get that first look traffic check here on the 7 o'clock report with Andy Farnsworth. Tim, still crash free on I-15 so far, and that means no extra slowdowns for once you're on the freeway to whatever exit you're picking. Uh, Traffic is a little bit heavier in West Valley on Mountain View and Bangor, but even city streets this morning seem a little lighter than they should be. Uh, for being in the 7 o'clock hour. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. KSL News Time now is 7.05. Two weeks after a cyber attack hit the nation's largest health insurer, experts say it appears the United Health Group may have paid the hackers $22 million in ransom. United Health has not confirmed that payment, reported by Reuters and Wired. But uh, cybersecurity expert Scott Spiro says with Bitcoin, everything's out in the open. The uh, smoking gun, so to speak, was a publicly visible $22 million transaction on Bitcoin's blockchain. Spiro says paying ransom might seem like a quick fix, but in the long run, it's more likely to encourage bad actors. A San Pete woman is charged with defrauding Medicaid out of nearly $13 million. Investigators say that Lillian Smiskey submitted more than 500 fraudulent Medicaid claims between March of 2019 and June of 2022. She oversaw operations for a clinic in Mount Pleasant during that time. She's facing multiple charges, including tax evasion and public assistance fraud. Families in holiday back in their homes after a gas leak led to an evacuation. Unified Fire says it was a small car accident uh, that hit a gas meter leading to that leak. Eleven homes were evacuated as a hazmat team monitored the gas leak. No injuries luckily were reported. And police say the man who shot a teen outside a Murray McDonald's is now behind bars in Colorado. 
Police say that John Parides was uh, taken into custody near Grand Junction on Sunday. He's waiting extradition back to Utah on possible attempted homicide charges. The teen is in the hospital in uh, critical condition this morning. A new program in Ogden hoping to help food service startups. KSL News Radio's Michael Commit is live with more. Michael? You'll recall how James Madison Elementary School has been closed. Well, now it'll be back in action as the site of a new kitchen incubator program, Ogden's first shared kitchen space. Interested businesses can join a wait list to use the school's kitchen, and this will come with educational resources provided by Weber State. When open, the program will work with businesses to produce packaged, canned, and other goods, along with some sweeter stuff as well. That'll all happen in the next few weeks. Michael Commit, KSL News Radio. A massive industrial fire in a Detroit suburb overnight drew a crowd of onlookers as well as a warning from authorities. Police in Clinton, Michigan, urged people to stay inside because of the debris that was raining down from as far away as a mile from that blast. Witnesses, though, weren't deterred. They're talking about explosions and fire, and of course, I got to be a spectator. I, I just forgot my keg of beer, that's all. <laughs> Uh, the, the building where the explosions happened housed nitrogen tanks for a vaping supplier, not the kind of thing you want to be close to. Officials in the area say the fire is now under control and they've tested the air quality and found it to be safe. And this story caught our eye this morning. A cluster of earthquakes have been detected north of Milford. There have been more than 500 of them in two weeks. KSL News Radio's Heather Peterson explains why. Scientists from the University of Utah Seismograph Station say these earthquakes are being caused by the drilling for geothermal energy production. All of the earthquakes are being measured at or below a 2.7 magnitude, and scientists say they are small enough that people can't feel them. Whew. Scientists claim there is no cause for concern, and the earthquakes are not expected to get any bigger. It's 709, and if you're making your way in this morning, let's get another look at traffic and weather together. Brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon, Andy. Tim, right now I-15, traffic is still clear through the Salt Lake Valley, despite some heavy uh, stretches where traffic is building up. Uh, there's not a lot of delay this morning. Even on Bangor, it was starting to back up. I was thinking we was going to stick around, but at least for now, uh, the only intersection you might get caught at is 4700 South. Mountain View, 3500 South seems to be the busiest uh, a whole along the whole west side. Uh, Michelle? For drivers making their way southbound, I-15 from Mary Slaterville all the way into downtown again, enjoying really good speeds if you're trying to get through that. Now, if you're on SR-193, we're seeing some slowdowns if you're trying to join I-15 just west of the freeway and still looking good if you're on Legacy or I-215. Heather? Things still look pretty good through Utah County. No problems on the major freeway. That's I-15. Heading north, which is where most of the traffic is going between Spanish Fork and Point of the Mountain. Now, city streets west of I-15, especially in the Lehigh, Saratoga Springs, Harvest Hills area, that's where you're going to see a bit of congestion, especially on 2100 north heading east, trying to get to Redwood Road, and then further east toward I-15, that's where the backups are. Heather Kelly in the KSL Traffic Center. KSL hourly forecast, we've got cloudy skies at 7 a.m. Temperatures hovering right around that freezing mark. By the lunch hour, still mostly cloudy, temps in the low 40s. For this afternoon, we'll top out at 47 degrees with mostly cloudy skies. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. Going to be tough to get any sunshine uh, through those clouds this morning. Right now, downtown, it is uh, 32. And Matt said we'd be hovering right around that 32-degree mark. We've talked about shrinkflation on this uh, program before. We're going to uh, tackle that one again coming up in depth in just a minute. But instead of going to Wall Street... We're headed to Sesame Street for somebody that's really upset that their cookies are smaller and costing them more. You can probably guess who's going to join us coming up in a minute. Well, you hear about bed bugs occasionally in hotel rooms, but a California man says what he found in his bed in Las Vegas was a lot worse. A scorpion that jolted him awake at the Venetian's Palazzo Resort. Nobody staying in Vegas needs to be exposed to deadly scorpions while they're sleeping, let alone on their private areas, their testicles, etc. All right, that's more information than I actually needed, but this is one of those things that we indeed hope stays in Vegas. He's suing the hotel and casino for the bite he says he got the day after Christmas. BYU moves back into the AP Top 25 poll after last week's win at Kansas and of course that big home come from behind win over TCU. 
The Cougars are number 20 on the list. Utah not far, or Utah State not far behind. They're steady at number 22. Houston, UConn, and Purdue are the top three spots, all three with 26 and three records. By the way, Iowa State, who the Cougs will play tomorrow night on the road, actually moved up from number eight to number six. A uh, big night for Jordan Clarkson and the Utah Jazz. The Jazz beat Washington at the Delta Center last night, 127-115. Before you get too excited, I think it was the 15th straight loss for Washington, so it's a good thing that Jazz won this one. Clarkson, by the way, set a new record, becoming the first bench player to notch at least 38 points, 10 rebounds, and 7 assists. Can I go? Tete uh, might have uh, been onto something when she announced her upcoming album's name, the Tortured Poets Department. Ancestry posted on uh, Instagram that Taylor Swift is the sixth cousin three times removed of the famed poet Emily Dickinson. Swift herself once described some of her li- lyrics as sounding like a letter written by Emily Dickinson's great grandmother <laughs> while sewing a lace curtain. Who knew? And a new study is opening up the conversation that wearing high heels can actually improve the way you walk. KSL News Radio's Emma Kettington has more. Anyone who wears high heels know that they aren't always comfortable. But a new study by the Journal of Applied Physiology says people who wear high heels consistently actually are more efficient walkers. The study had people wear three-inch heels for 14 weeks. Those who participated used less energy to walk than before they started regularly wearing heels. About 9% less energy to be exact. But the American Osteopathic Association says high heels do put people at a higher risk of unaligned joints and pulled muscles, so walk at your own risk. Trending this hour on the 7 o'clock report, Jason Kelsey has retired after 13 seasons with the Philadelphia Eagles. He officially called it quits yesterday, ending a career where he became a beloved Philly personality and a popular podcast host. He says it was always a goal to play his whole career in one city, and he played 193 regular season games for the Eagles. I just think it's sad for a guy that was really such a standout. You don't usually hear the kind of attention uh, that he has received from linemen, but uh, now he's known, of course, as the brother of Taylor Swift's boyfriend. Well, the late Alex Trebek was open about uh, Celebrity Jeopardy being easier than regular Jeopardy, but one comedic actor is joining the ranks of celebrities that can hold their own in the regular competition. Ian Barinholtz, known for his role in the Mindy Project and History of the World, competed in this year's Tournament of Champions, marking the first time that a celeb has gone up against regular competitors. He's now advancing to the semifinals, which will start uh, just a couple of days away. Yeah, two days away. That's coming up uh, March 7th. KSL News Time, 715. The three things you need to know this hour. First, a Utah woman is suing Salt Lake County and several people connected to the Salt Lake County Metro Jail over the in custody death of her husband. I'm KSL News Radio's Becky Bruce. Second, families in Holiday are back in their homes after a gas leak led to an evacuation. No injuries have been reported. Third, a look at the drive with traffic and weather together. We're just looking at a crash in Taylorsville, 5400 south and 3200 west. It's apparently blocking the right lane westbound, but with the flex lanes, that's there's only two lanes going west right now, so you have to move to the left to get around the crash. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. Mostly cloudy skies today with a high of 47. I'm Matt Johnson. These temperatures haven't changed since we uh, got here this morning. Still on the freezing mark, 32 degrees. And time for a look at KSL's top national stories. From ABC News. I'm Sherry Preston. Voters in more than a dozen states off to polling places on this Super Tuesday. If they haven't already voted by mail in Super Tuesday contests for the Republicans, ABC's Rachel Scott says Donald Trump continues his march toward clinching the Republican nomination. Trump's only remaining rival Nikki Haley making one last stand, telling voters the former president is a drag on the party. The choice comes down to this. We can either have more of the same or we can go in a new direction. But polls show Trump with double-digit leads in most of the states voting today. And with just hours to spare, a rare unanimous decision from the U.S. Supreme Court, 
rejecting a Colorado decision to kick Trump off the ballot because of his actions on January 6th. Massive industrial fire in suburban Detroit last night. This woman lives nearby. I thought it was thunder and I actually checked my weather app to see if it was supposed to storm or rain tonight and it wasn't and then that's when I heard about it. The factory was owned by a vaping distribution company exploding butane canisters. A 19 year old a quarter mile away from the factory was struck by one of those canisters and killed. In the Texas Panhandle, they're recovering after the biggest wildfire in state history. Homeowners, ranchers, and farmers are returning to their property to see what the fire left behind. In some cases, it isn't much. But Andy Holloway, the Hemp Hill County Extension Agent, says those Panhandle residents are not alone. It is absolutely remarkable and phenomenal. The people that have showed up here with hay, with fencing supplies. Volunteers have flowed in from across Texas. State government and FEMA have set up trailers to offer assistance. Jim Ryan, ABC News, Dallas. Three days of negotiations with Hamas and Israel over a ceasefire in Gaza ending today without a breakthrough. Could be good news for you if you don't pay your bills on time. Consumer Financial Protection Bureau finalizing a rule that will cut credit card fees to just 8 bucks. the average now around $32. You're listening to ABC News. All right, let's go in depth here with the top economic mind of our time, the Cookie Monster. He has a take on the economic phenomenon we call shrinkflation. We get the story from ABC News correspondent Trevor Holt. This morning, the cookie monster has had enough. Chocolate chip cookie important to me, too. His beef with shrinkflation is getting attention on Capitol Hill after he posted, quote, me hate shrinkflation. Me cookies are getting smaller. Senator Sherrod Brown responded, me too, cookie monster. People in my state of Ohio are fed up. They should get all the cookie they pay for. Shrinkflation is when companies make the size of their products smaller without cutting prices. A report from Pennsylvania Senator Bob Casey found the size of some Oreo cookies has decreased by 6% since 2019. And a family size of Wheat Thins has dropped 12% in weight. Try new Charmin Mega Roll. It's four times the sheets in one. Even some Charmin toilet paper rolls now have 20 fewer sheets. President Biden recently took Look aim at shrinkflation, calling it a ripoff. Give me a break. The American public is tired of being played for suckers. Last week, Senator Casey introduced a bill that would give the FTC and state attorneys general authority to crack down on shrinkflation. Even though inflation is down considerably from two years ago, a report on prices released last month was worse than expected, fueling new worries on Wall Street. Boy, that has been a frustration for so many, and I'm right there with the cookie monster. You get a bag of chips, and once you pop the seal, uh, you squeeze it down, and there's, you know, half of it is air. But it also happens with your cookies these days, and while the Biden administration is working on cutting the uh, penalties charged by credit cards, Cookie Monster is going after shrinkflation today. Super Tuesday, maybe Cookie Monster for president. 719, time for a look at uh, traffic and weather together. Brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. And he's back in the traffic center. Well, we're definitely seeing traffic increasing in volume. We've got a crash in Taylorsville, 5400 South, 3200 West. It seems to be having an outsized impact on the westbound traffic, although most of the traffic is going east. But this is heading towards Bangator on 5400 South. And then you've got slowing on Bangator near 47th. Mountain View starting to back up as well at 54th South, 3500 South. Main line of I-15, though, still delay-free from Draper to Salt Lake. Michelle? People trying to get onto Hill Air Force Base still seeing delays at the West Gate. South Gate looking good at this point. SR 193 this is busy though. This is just west of I 15 in the Clearfield area. Looking good all the way into downtown on I 15. Heather? Things are still looking good in Utah County. No delays yet. I 15, either northbound or southbound between Spanish Fork and the point of the mountain. But traffic definitely getting very busy for people trying to get out of Saratoga Springs and Eagle Mountain. All of your major thoroughfares are starting to back up when lights turn red. And if you're up in the Park City area, no delays on US 40, but if you turn off US 40 onto SR 248 getting to the high school, that has major delays. Big O Tires is your one-stop shop for tires and service. Now through March 17th, buy three, get one free on select sets of tires. Big O Tires, the team you trust. Heather Kelly in the KSL Traffic Center. KSL 7-day forecast keeps the clouds around for the next few days. Mostly cloudy today, 47. 51 tomorrow, mostly cloudy. Slight chance for an isolated shower. 
Better chance for scattered rain snow showers on Thursday. 45 the high. We drop down to 42, partly cloudy on Friday. Sunny on Saturday, 50 degrees, 54. We're rebounding, partly cloudy on Sunday. And then it's 57 with a mix of sun and clouds on Monday. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. Cloudy downtown this hour and 32 degrees. The seven-day forecast brought to you by Performance Automotive Bountiful. Super Tuesday coverage, of course, throughout the day today. I'm sure Dave and Debbie are going to be talking about it with Dave and Dujanovic, 9 to noon. Boyd Matheson, has uh, a, he'll be dedicating at least one full half hour of his two hours to uh, Super Tuesday, starting at 1.30. Just want to remind you, too, that... Uh, we hope you're here every day starting at 3 o'clock for Jeff Kaplan's afternoon news. But today at 5 o'clock, right in the middle of his show, um, we are going to begin our uh, wall-to-wall Super Tuesday caucus coverage. And it looks like, let me see, Jeff's going to be joined. Boyd's going to stick around. He's got a long day. Mario Carbello will also uh, be here from KSL at night. And coverage will continue for four straight hours going up until 9 o'clock tonight. The polls close. The caucus ends at uh, 8 o'clock. So look for that coverage beginning at 5 here on KSL News Radio, and then be back tomorrow morning at 5 as we uh, give you the results the day after, not just here in Utah, but all across the country. KSL News Time, 723. This is Derek Miller speaking on business. Utah is known for being home to many entrepreneurs and small business owners, but it can be difficult for them to find the right legal services. AGS Law was created to change that. Founder Ashley Garby-Smith joins us with more. In 2020, I started AGS Law with a distinct mission, providing expert legal services for small business owners, dentists, optometrists, and veterinarians. Our firm stands out for its flat fee model, offering transparent, predictable pricing. At AGS Law, we value building a personal rapport with each client. We are committed to upfront fee structures and quick response times. Our expertise encompasses helping professionals start their businesses, negotiating leases and commercial real estate deals, drafting various agreements, and overseeing the purchase and sale of small businesses and professional practices. We also help protect your brand through trademark registration. Our focus on these specific practice areas guarantees exceptional expertise in small business law and professional practice transitions. Whether you're in the market to buy or sell a business or practice, require contract drafting or reviewing, or want to protect your brand with trademarks, AGS Law is your reliable ally in navigating your legal needs. From dental law and estate planning to business contracts and trademarks, AGS Law is here to address your business's unique needs. Learn more at their website. I'm Derek Miller with the Salt Lake Chamber, speaking on business. For over 80 years, Farm Bureau Financial Services has been protecting farmers and ranchers season after season. You need to know you're covered and you've got somebody covering your back. You've got local people that everybody knows. And we have a good policy and a good agent, and I guess that's what you need to be able to sleep at night. Loyal, local, and rooted in ag for over 80 years. Learn more at fbfs.com slash rooted in ag. It's your future. Let's protect it. Are you looking to get a COVID-19 booster to stay healthy this cold and flu season? If you join the Beehive Study, you'll have the chance to receive up to $550 for getting a booster and completing weekly COVID tests and brief surveys about your health. Don't want to get a COVID-19 booster? That's okay, too. You can still join the Beehive Study and receive up to $550 for completing weekly COVID tests and surveys. Help advance research at the University of Utah while taking care of yourself this season. Call 801-203-0320 or email beehivestudy at utah.edu to learn more. You can also visit the study website at beehivestudy.com. Watching Utah's Money, brought to you by Trajan Wealth, your trusted local fiduciary advisors, TrajanWealth.com. Target's annual revenue dropped for the first time in seven years. The Wall Street Journal says less people are splurging on home goods and electronics and instead spending their money on food and other essentials, leaving Target in a rough plot, uh, spot since they get most of their sales from non-food items. More than half of college graduates are underemployed. That's from research from the Burning Glass Institute and the Strata Institute. They say around 52% of college grads are working jobs that don't make any use of their diploma. A Gallup poll says only 36% of Americans had confidence in higher education. And the Biden administration is moving to cap credit card late fees at 8 bucks. It's the latest effort in the White House's push to end junk fees. The administration says it could save Americans up to $10 billion a year. 
According to the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, the average credit card late fee is around $32. Your money at this moment. Uh, the losses are picking up some steam here about uh, three and a half minutes away from the opening bell. The Dow now down 154. That's four-tenths of a percent. The S&P loss is closing in on a half a percentage point, down 23. And the NASDAQ is off almost three-quarters of a percent this hour. It's off by 128. Gold making some gains, though. It's up $12 uh, an ounce at 21.38.20. Uh, traffic is busy on Mountain View Corridor and spots from Harriman to West Valley this hour around the intersections. We've got an accident in Taylorsville at 3200 West. We'll get the latest on that as well next. Talking about, you know, shrinkflation and how you can uh, navigate uh, the inflation of the day today. NPS is always our go-to to suggest for you and your family, whether that's food or whether it's really just about anything else in your life. NPS puts products on their shelves and then they mark them down 20 to 70% off retail pricing. They do the chest, uh, price checking on all of the items before they come in. The great thing about NPS, they don't even know what's coming in tomorrow, but they know they've got to have space on those shelves at their stores uh, so that they can uh, move it to you at a great price. So when they uh, see another shipment coming in and they know they've got a sizable one the next day, they really start to mark things down on groceries, produce, frozen, and deli. But when it comes to health and beauty, electronics, so many other things you can save money on for your family and they do get new items every day. Here's the fun thing. From uh, time to time, when they really need to uh, move things out, you'll find a table full of things that says everything $2 or all books, 5 bucks. <laughs> uh, and uh, business started with a really simple concept of assisting other businesses with overstock, refused, unclaimed, or damaged merchandise. The thing you need to know, too, this is all brand new name brand stuff that you're going to save so much money on. NPS, it is a nice place to save, and you're going to find it with four locations in Orem, in Layton, and two stores in Salt Lake City. The Cougars are fighting for their best chance in the Big Dance. BYU has displayed its resiliency throughout this campaign. Wow. The Big 12 tournament is days away, and then it's the NCAA tournament. This Wednesday, it's BYU, Iowa State. Free game is at 6 and tip off at 7 on Utah's legacy home for the Cougars. KSL News Radio. 729 traffic and weather together brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. That's a lot of emergency vehicles in Taylorsville, Andy, and I don't really see the accident. Well, it kind of went into that little field that's right there off of the uh, intersection at 5400 South, 3200 West. So westbound only has one lane open going through the intersection. They've set out cones because this is the flex lane, so all the eastbounders, they want to make sure that uh, we don't get any other collisions. And now a big giant flatbed's pulling up on scene. That may be an even bigger issue, but we've got slowing in both directions. 5400 South, 3200 West. I-15 still delay-free in Salt Lake County. 201 freeway beginning to stack up a bit around 7200 West. Michelle? Well, I-15 also still delay-free on between Weber and Davis counties. If you're on SR-193, though, in Clearfield, just west of I-15, looking at some backups there. Heather? SR-248 in Summit County, one of your busier roadways right now. You'll see those delays just after you exit U.S. 40 and head west toward the Park City High School. Down in Utah County, we have quite a bit of traffic now on 2100 North. Almost all of it is heading eastbound between Redwood Road and I-15, but Redwood Road still in pretty good shape heading north into Salt Lake Valley. Transform your outdated kitchen with half-priced granite. Granite, quartz, marble, and quartzite starting at $25 per square foot installed. Visit halfpricegranite.com. Available luxury. Heather Kelly in the KSL Traffic Center. Eventually this afternoon, we'll get to a high of 47, warming to 51 degrees tomorrow with a 30% chance of showers. Still on the freezing mark, though, 32 this hour. You're listening to Utah's Morning News with Tim Hughes and Amanda Dixon on KSL News Radio, 102.7 FM and 1160 AM. Good morning, KSL News Time is 7:30. Our top story this half hour: a Davis County teen is home safe after sending a secret help signal to his family. KSL News Radio's Peter Johnston is live with the details of this story. Peter. Tim, police found this missing teen in a hotel room with four adult men, and they accused one of them of attempting to kidnap the boy and take him back to California. It all hinged on that teenager changing his voicemail. The 14-year-old's family reported him as a possible runaway to the Davis County Sheriff's Office on Sunday night, but they had made a plan to redo their voicemail 
as a sign of trouble. And notice when their child changed his, according to KSL TV. Police got a second clue when the teen shared his location with his family, and then the sheriff's office say they believe the alleged predator, 36-year-old Austin David Arnold, met the teen online and was planning to bring him back to his home state of California. Reporting live from North Salt Lake County, Peter Johnston, KSL News Radio. The Utah legislative session came to a heated end. A new bill calls for more accountability from the office of Salt Lake County DA Sim Gill. KSL TV's Daniel Woodruff reports. Senate Bill 273 requires Gill's office to report how his prosecutors spend their time in 15 minute increments. It also allows the governor or the group overseeing revitalizing downtown to recommend that the Utah Supreme Court remove Gill and replace him. Opponents to the bill argue that uh, it would burden Gill's office. Supporters say it would help prosecute criminals more thoroughly. A Utah woman is suing Salt Lake County and several people associated with the Salt Lake County Metro Jail over the death of her husband while in their custody. She says they should have done more to get him medical help. KSL News Radio's Becky Bruce has that story for us live. Becky? Tim, Amy Baker's lawsuit comes almost exactly two years after she says her husband Leland Cropper died in jail custody and in obvious medical distress. He was booked on accusations of driving on a suspended license and having drug paraphernalia in his possession. The lawsuit claims he was severely underweight when he was booked and lost 15 pounds over five days in custody. But despite multiple jail nurses and caseworkers checking on him, the suit claims no one sought additional medical care. Baker wants damages on behalf of herself and the couple's four children. We have asked the jail for comment, but have not yet received a response. Becky Bruce, KSL News Radio. KSL's top national stories this hour. Voters in Colorado casting their votes in the state's primary, where former President Donald Trump will remain on the ballot. The Supreme Court ruled giving the state the ability to remove a candidate from the ballot grants them too much power. ABC's legal analyst Kate Shaw explains why new ballots don't need to be printed. The state court in Colorado ruled back in December that Trump was ineligible and shouldn't be on the ballot, but they stayed their own ruling, and actually the ballots were printed with Trump's name on them. Shaw says the speed of their decision in this case could set a precedent for his immunity trial coming up in April. Over 800 delegate spots will be decided in 15 states and one territory. KSL News Radio's Mark Jackson has the details on Utah's place in this Super Tuesday history. KSL at night's Mara Carabello says the Beehive State went it alone for a time, but its five electoral votes didn't garner much traction on the big stage. So we hitched a ride out west. A decade ago, we had all the western states. The west coast states are going to band together, and all the media attention is going to be on Nevada, New Mexico, Utah, Colorado, Wyoming. That fizzled, says Mara, and Utah joined 23 other states for Super Tuesday 2008. Bernie Sanders won the Utah Democratic primary on Super Tuesday of 2020, and former President Trump swept all delegates in the Republican primary that same year. Mark Jackson, KSL News Radio. The dates have been set for state and congressional debates here in Utah. Things kick off with the gubernatorial debate on September 23rd. That'll happen at Salt Lake Community College. Senate and several House candidates will debate on uh, uh, Utah State uh, campus in October. And Nicholas Rossi will be back in court today. He's facing several charges after faking his death and fleeing the country to avoid rape charges. He still insists he's not Rossi and has been mistakenly uh, extradited. 735, time for a look at uh, first look traffic here. We go back to Andy Farnsworth. And Tim, right now, I-15 has got a little bit of slowing creeping in at the south end of Salt Lake County. You're coming up on the Bangor Highway exit. The biggest delay, though, right now, 5400 south, 3200 west. They've got the traffic lights malfunctioning at that intersection, along with the crash. Westbound only has one lane through, and they've blocked off north and southbound lanes going through the intersection. So that's an area to try and avoid if you can in Taylorsville. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. Utah Clean Energy is teaming up with UCARE to help cities become better prepared for electric vehicles. A shortage of charging stations remains one of the biggest obstacles for electric vehicle owners. Kelby Gopal with Utah Clean Energy says that's why they're working with cities to adopt EV-ready ordinances. What an EV-ready ordinance typically does is it requires that a certain percentage of parking spaces in a multifamily housing building be equipped with the right infrastructure to support installing an EV charging station in the future. She says about 80 percent of EV charging takes place at home, which is fine for people living in single family houses, but becomes difficult for people in apartment complexes. Don Brinkerhoff, KSL News Radio. 
Salt Lake City is trying to preserve and reuse historic buildings. KSL News Radio's Alessandra Gurr reports. This proposal initiated by Salt Lake City Mayor Aaron Mendenhall would make some changes to the zoning ordinances that would allow for more flexibility in reusing historic buildings. This means that some eligible buildings could be transformed into multifamily residential use even if the property is zoned on institutional or public lands. It would also change the eligibility requirements for historic buildings to include any building with a minimum age of 50 years, increasing the number of buildings that can be reused and preserved. The proposal was unique unanimously passed by the Planning Commission and will be heard by the City Council this week. Word from Bryce National Park officials that they're going to make it easier to ride horses through the park. What a spectacular uh, experience that is, by the way. The riding permits will now be more accessible online after almost a 1,000 applications were filed last year. Almost a decade ago, there were just 124 applications. And a pair of farmers hauling a trailer full of goats had to pull over during Saturday's storm Two residents in Tooele, uh, Tooele County share how people rallied to help feed and milk the animals until they could get back on the road again. I told my mom, hey, we got to go down to Tractor Supply. There's 50 goats down there that need to be milked. Strangers helping strangers. It was, it was amazing. That's great stuff. Volunteers worked until travel conditions improved. Oh, we're waiting for travel conditions to improve in Taylorsville, right there at that intersection, 5400 South, 3200 West. Still working on an accident there. Uh, some traffic forced to cut through the 7-Eleven parking lot. We'll check traffic and weather together next. Spend your workday with a talk show that makes you feel better about the news. Dave and Dejanovic. They have a good dynamic between the two of them. Sometimes I'll take Dave's side and sometimes I'll take Debbie's side. They're great. Dave and Debbie, live from 9 to noon, or podcast the show on the app for KSL News Radio. It's the question that's been on everybody's mind, and it's about to be answered. When will Gillette Heating and Air offer plumbing services? You want to know? Yeah! The answer is now. To celebrate, Gillette is offering a free tankless water heater when you buy a high-efficiency heating and cooling system. For a limited time while supplies last, call Gillette today for heating, AC, and now plumbing. Call 385-GET-HEAT. Carrier, turn to the experts. It's complicated. These days, that's how people even describe their relationship status. When it comes to the latest complexities in your car, it's gotten really complicated. The experts at Amco undergo the most rigorous training to stay on top of the latest car technologies, so there's nothing we can't fix. Well, except for that complicated relationship. When it comes to that, you're on your own. Double A, MCO. Check engine light on, we'll check it for free. Let's face it, nothing makes you look older than you really are than thinning hair. But what if you could not only increase your hair count, but promote new hair growth without surgery? without drugs with potential side effects, and without a prescription from your doctor. Well, now you can, thanks to a breakthrough new supplement called Hair Grow. Provided by New Nordic, the number one supplier of dietary supplements in Europe, Hair Grow is now available in the U.S. Only Hair Grow contains Tokogaya, a powerful antioxidant that has received a U.S. patent. Multiple clinical studies show Hair Grow is safe and effective in promoting new hair growth. In one study, 95% of the patients using hair grow saw increased hair count. Don't lose more time and more hair. Try hair grow today to feel and look your best. Just go to newnordicusa.com or visit Walgreens or Amazon to purchase. Look younger and feel more confident with hair grow by New Nordic at newnordicusa.com. KSL News Time, 739. Traffic and weather together. Brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. Is that situation in Taylorsville getting any better, Andy? No, Tim. We've got only one lane open westbound on 5400 South at 3200 West. They've also blocked the north and southbound lanes through the intersection as they try to work on this crash. It looks like a vehicle, you know, maybe took out uh, one of the power poles, too, because we got the traffic lights flashing at that intersection. Big delay there, Taylorsville. Bangor is also backing up Taylorsville between 54 and 4700 South. First delay of the morning on 201 around Bangor and then northbound I-15. Scattered slowdowns between Bluffdale and Sandy. Michelle.
go. Well, we're seeing some slowdowns. This is on Highway 89 around Harrison Boulevard, and then on SR 93 as you're approaching uh, I-15. This is just west of there. If you are in the Clearfield area, looking good though on I-15 for in Weber and Davis counties. Heather, the delays are increasing in Utah County. This is in the Lehigh Saratoga Springs area. Redwood Road northbound is just a parking lot right now. As you come up from Harvest Hills Boulevard up to Redwood Road. Uh, excuse me, up to 2100 North. And then if you are uh, in the Harvest Hills area trying to use Mountain View Corridor, which turns into 2100 North, that is also backed up at Redwood Road. Northbound I-15 though, we're seeing a bit of heavy traffic through the Pleasant Grove area, heading up to Point of the Mountain, but so far no big delays there. Is it winter? Is it spring? Who cares? Come explore Logan. Catch the Cache Valley Cowboy Rendezvous March 14th through the 17th with big name Western music, cowboy poetry, and dances. ExploreLogan.com. Heather Kelly in the KSL Traffic Center. Mostly cloudy skies today with a high of 47. Overnight, we keep the clouds around and milder overnight lows in the mid-30s. For tomorrow, 51, mostly cloudy and a slight chance for an isolated shower. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. And right now, 32 degrees uh, downtown. Coming up in just a minute, of course, it's Super Tuesday. We're going to take a little different look at it today with 538's uh, Jeffrey Skelly. He is the senior elections analyst for ABC News and 538. Yesterday, uh, Nikki Haley was saying that she just wanted, as long as she stayed competitive without really giving a definition of what that looks like, as long as she was competitive, she was going to stay in the race. I noticed this morning she says her effort today will de- be to block Trump from getting a clean sweep. So what are the chances that Donald Trump gets 15 out of 15? We're going to talk with Jeffrey Skelly about that coming up here in just a minute. Right now, though, it's time for uh, Jeff Kaplan's Minute of News, and it's brought to you by the law offices of Jordan Wilcox. Do you still have your kids' baby pictures? Looking back, it doesn't matter how much you paid for them because decades later, they're priceless. But I wonder how new moms and dads will feel when they look back. There's this new trend in baby photography. The Wall Street Journal reports couples are paying up to $11,000 for baby pics. So what does $11,000 get you? First, the initial planning session with the photographer, which takes place 20 weeks before birth. That's when the parents discuss the theme for the photo shoot. Say you like the TV show Friends. Your photographer will build a pint-sized version of the set, maybe two feet tall, ordering miniature props from overseas or eBay. And then comes the blessed moment, five to ten days after birth, the perfect time for a newborn shoot, during which your baby will sleep on a tiny version of the couch from friends on an identical but tiny set. A space heater will keep little Hudson or Eleanor warm and sleepy as they shoot the pics. Then when the shoot is over, you're out ten grand. You get photo albums where the child is enjoying your favorite passions. Whether it's a little tiny ski lodge or a jazz locker room or a Starbucks, photos that used to be about the newborn baby's beauty are now pics about the mom and dad's passions that they can post on social media. And someday when little Hudson or Eleanor turns 40, their kids will ask, what is friends? And they'll answer, Grandma got 76 likes for that photo. Jeff Kaplan's Minute of News, only on KSL News Radio. It's brought to you this morning by the law offices of Jordan Wilcox. IRS harassing you? Let the law offices of Jordan Wilcox help. Visit taxhelput.com. Hi, I'm Utah tax attorney Jordan Wilcox. When the IRS invades your life, it's never good news. It's not just you. My husband passed away. He had been ill for quite some time. And um, he did the taxes, but he forgot to send them in. He never sent the forms in. And this was the beginning of my nightmare. Don't face the IRS alone. With everything in your life at stake, don't trust just anyone. I got all these letters from the IRS telling me I owed them $63,000. I had a good friend that she said, you need an attorney. She said, call Jordan Wilcox. You need someone to fight for you. He said, Cynthia, we're going to give him $3,000. How does that sound? I started crying because I was overwhelmed. Visit TaxHelpUT.com and get relief today. Let's solve your tax problems now. Visit TaxHelpUT.com. You have it made in the shade with Jordan Wilcox. That's TaxHelpUT.com. KSL News Time, 745. 
The three things you need to know this hour. First, tonight's caucus is all about having a dialogue, according to the Republican Party chair in Utah. Republicans are meeting at hundreds of locations across the state. I'm KSL News Radio's Amy Kobabe. Second, Utah Clean Energy is working with cities and counties to be better prepared for the growing popularity of electric vehicles. Third, it's traffic and weather together. Well, 5200 South, Taylorsville got a crash at 3200 West. Kind of a headache for drivers in that portion of Taylorsville. There's a bigger delay on Bangor, but that we see every morning coming down the hill in uh, Taylorsville. I-15 beginning to slow Bangor, South Jordan, and uh, a little bit in the middle of the valley around Murray. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. Lots of clouds for the next few days and slight rain and snow chances. I'm Matt Johnson. Right now, 32 degrees in Salt Lake City. Utah's Super Tuesday Caucus. Special coverage on Utah's Morning News. Former President Donald Trump is leading over Nikki Haley with more than 200 delegates. Uh, But can she turn this around? Joining me live, ABC News senior elections analyst Jeffrey Skelly. I mentioned a moment ago, Jeffrey, that uh, she is out this morning in a couple of different interviews talking about that her effort today will be to block Trump from getting a clean sweep. You've sort of uh, set the betting odds on this uh, going into Super Tuesday. What do you think? Well, it's going to be tough, and thanks for having me. It's going to be tough for Haley uh, to actually win any of the 15 states that are voting on the Republican side. Now, there are some where she could do better uh, that look closer, uh, but at the end of the day, I do think it's going to be challenging to actually win a single race. Uh, I don't want to rule it out, but based on the polling that we have, and in six states where we have enough for an average, Trump leads by uh, basically a minimum of 35 percentage points. Now, that might be overstating his edge to some extent. Some of that polling is a little stale at this point. We haven't actually had a lot of polling ahead of Super Tuesday, uh, so it might be a month or even two months old at this point. But I think it reflects the fact that, that Trump is so north of 50 in some of these places that even if Haley outperforms expectations, it's going to be tough for her to clear 50 and, and win in a head-to-head race against Trump. 854 delegates up for grabs. That's 35 percent of the total. Are these all winner-take-all, or do they split them in some cases? So, technically, states can't hold outright winner-take-all primaries until after March 15th. Uh, on the Republican side, that's a national party rule. However, what they can do is they can say, well, if no one wins a majority— the, the delegates will be allocated proportionally, and they'll have maybe a threshold you have to reach to, to, to be eligible for that, maybe 15 percent, 20 percent. But a lot of the states voting today have a winner-take-all trigger, which is permitted under Republican National Committee rules, and that's 50 percent in basically all the states that have a winner-take-all tra- trigger. And so the thing is we have a head-to-head race for the most part. There'll be a scattering of votes for candidates who were in the race, like a DeSantis or a Christie or what have you. But for the most part, most votes will be going to Trump or Haley. And as a result, you can basically bet that that someone will clear 50 in every state. <laughs> yeah. So as a result, those states with those winner-take-all triggers will will end up winning all the delegates. And so for the most part, that's going to be Donald Trump. We're pretty close to being out of time here, but I have to ask because there's some rumblings that part of uh, Nikki Haley's strategy with these court cases that are still pending out there would be to have as many delegates as she can going into uh, the convention to give her some leverage. Is that possible today? I I do think that she's she's got her eye in part on that. You know, we don't know all of her motivation. Is she staying in just to push back against Trump? Is she staying in? Uh, to leave open the possibility that something could happen that could interrupt his campaign and give her a shot. And I think the most, the more delegates she has, uh, the, the easier it will be for her to make the case that she should be the alternative if that situation were to arise. All right. Uh, as always, we appreciate your analysis. Uh, Jeffrey Skelly is a senior elections analyst for ABC News and 538 there in New York. Time for a look at traffic and weather together at 749. Brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Safe up to 20 cents a gallon. Andy, uh, <laughs> that's not getting any better. Might be getting worse there in Taylorsville. Yeah, they got some more emergency vehicles on the scene. So for 5400 South, 3200 West, you can't go north-south through the intersection, but uh, you can cut through the 7-Eleven parking lot, which is like most people are doing. 
The bigger delay is because of the traffic light malfunction at the intersection now. And so you've got eastbound delay from Bangor over to 3200 West and westbound backups because of the lane restriction from the crash and the traffic light malfunction. We do have some slowdowns on I-15 getting worse now between 123rd and 106 South and some heavier traffic at both Murray and in Salt Lake City just before the 6 South exit. Michelle? Well, it's still very quiet up north on I-15. Weber Davis County is running at posted speeds. We do have some slowdowns on Highway 89 around Harrison Boulevard and then again as you're approaching I-84 in the Uinta area for p- drivers trying to use Legacy or I-215's westbound that's still looking good. Heather? We're pretty congested now on the west side of I-15 in the Lehigh Saratoga Springs area. 2300 west, Redwood Road, 2100 north, all of them have at least a mile of delay now trying to get out of the area either toward I-15 or driving north toward the Salt Lake Valley. Now over in the Park City area, you still have delays on SR-248. That's from people exiting US-40 and heading west toward the high school. For a top quality kitchen or bath with top quality craftsmanship, call 3-Day Kitchen and Bath. They're always on time with no delays and meet all deadlines. Visit 3daykitchen.com. Heather Kelly in the KSL Traffic Center. The seven-day forecast brought to you by Performance Automotive Bountiful, and uh, Matt is back. What kind of a day are we in store for today? Hey, pretty easy Super Tuesday. Mostly cloudy, 47. And don't be surprised if you see a sprinkle, but nothing substantial. Kind of a similar setup tomorrow, mostly cloudy, slight chance for a sprinkle, 51. Best chance for rain, snow, showers is Thursday, 45. Friday, 42, partly cloudy. And then it's high pressure, like clockwork for your weekend, 50 Saturday to 54 on Sunday. Hey, before you know it, uh, we're headed up towards 60, uh, going for a high of 57 on Monday. We joke about this whiplash weather and, you know, how wild it can be in the spring in Utah, but I loved your chart today to really map out the drastic changes. Yep. So in the month of March, these are normals. Uh, two days in the 30s, eight days in the 40s, 11 days in the 50s, eight days in the 60s, and two days in the 70s. We can basically get anything. Something for everybody. Yeah. A one-stop shop. All right. Uh, thank you, sir. Right now in Salt Lake City, it is uh, 32 degrees. Been there all morning. We'll check money news coming up next. The life of a small business owner, keeping the lights on, calling all the shots, and then there's workplace accidents, 500 degree ovens, rusty nails, danger lurks around every corner. Workplace accidents can happen, but there is an easy way to keep your employees covered. Talk to your agent about workers' comp coverage from Pi, or go to piinsurance.com and get a quote. Safety first, then Pi Insurance. Individual rates, offerings, and savings may vary. Subject to policy terms and conditions. Not available in all states and situations. Jazz Plus is here. With Jazz Plus, you can watch games live from your TV, computer, tablet, or phone. So don't miss any of the action when you're at home or away. Can't get enough of your favorite team? Go behind the scenes and see what the team is up to on and off the court. With flexible plans, you can choose what works for you from full season to monthly. Or just pick a single game you want to watch. Sign up and subscribe today at utahjazzplus.com. Healthcare with human kindness is here. It's at Common Spirit Health. Hospitals, clinics, and caregivers all connected to advance healthcare in Colorado, Kansas, and Utah. Together, we have a common purpose partnering with you in health and healing using powerful medicine, powerful technology, and the greatest power of all human kindness. You'll know it when you see it because human kindness is in every care site and in every caregiver. Common Spirit Health. Hello, human kindness. It's Super Tuesday, and today I get to participate in my first presidential preference poll. One thing that surprises me is the voting itself. With all the concerns in election security, voting today will be a little medieval. I'll tell you why today on Dave and Dujanovic. Watching Utah's Money, brought to you by Trajan Wealth, your trusted local fiduciary advisors, TrajanWealth.com. Half of Americans who applied for loans in the past two years were turned down. That's according to a new survey by Bankrate. The survey says people are uh, most often reporting getting denied for credit cards or an increase in their credit limit. There's a new trend on TikTok. Health care uh, worker selfies are reportedly being used on the app to sell unproven medical treatments. For example, one ER nurse's likeness was taken from her social media without her permission to sell a product called Miracle Moo, a supplement made with cow colostrum. 
And uh, China says it uh, hopes to achieve 5% economic growth this year. In an annual, in an annual address, uh, they outline plans to boost spending by developing technology and fortifying the military. China's economy grew at a 5.2% pace last year. Your money at this moment. Uh, markets are not responding to the bell very well. We're now down 206 on the Dow, which is half a percentage point. S&P also down a half a percent. It's off 28. And the NASDAQ now down over one full percentage point. Uh, after a down close yesterday, it's off another 184. It's time for Cougar Tracks. Here's KSL Sports BYU insider Mitch Harper. BYU football has completed three days of spring practice. The hot storyline at spring camp is the quarterback battle between Gary Bohannon and Jake Retzlaff. Offensive coordinator Aaron Roderick, however, has a different number one objective in spring to establish the ground attack, an area where BYU ranked dead last a year ago in the Big 12. Obviously it starts up front, but it's tight ends, it's receivers, it's the quarterback getting us into the right play. A lot of our run plays are audibles, or have the ability to be audibles. Sometimes it's, occasionally it's an RPO. We don't run a ton of those, but we do run some. And it's play action pass fitting together with the runs. So it's all of it. It's an 11 man deal, but that is our number one priority. We gotta get back to running the football the way we did the three years prior. To last year. For observations and notes from BYU football spring camp and the latest in the quarterback battle, go to kslsports.com or download the KSL Sports app today. With Cougar Tracks, I'm Mitch Harper on your legacy home of the BYU Cougars, KSL News Radio. And this portion of the news brought to you by Intermountain Healthcare, helping people live the healthiest life possible. Intermountain Healthcare, healing for life. At Intermountain Primary Children's Hospital, we made a bold promise to build the nation's model health system for children. Join us in realizing our vision for the future of pediatric care. So together, we can expand primary children's impact and ensure every child has access to the right care at the right place at the right time. For a century, Primary Children's has kept the child first and always. Help us continue to do so for the next 100 years. To get involved, visit primarypromise.org. At 34, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. I finished up my treatments. I truly, truly feel like every day is a gift. I really want to give back, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to help with this study. Heretogene is an extraordinarily innovative research study wherein we are looking at the genes of hundreds of thousands of participants. The more information that we have, the more we can help others. You can help at HeretaGene.org. Today's vote may seal the race for president. The two major parties in Utah are taking opposite approaches. Democrats will have a primary election. The United Utah Party and American Independent Party will also be having their caucuses. It all begins by showing up. Caucus night is the opportunity to do that. Super Tuesday, 16 states and territories vote, and more than 1,000 delegates are awarded. Listen for special coverage today. today. Plus, get analysis and reaction all day tomorrow. tomorrow. Utah's Super Tuesday Caucus on K. KSL News Radio. 759. Let's get that look at traffic and weather together now. Brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. Where do you start, Andy? Well, let's start with the crash that's still worked on, being worked on 5400 South, 3200 West. There's a, a big delay for eastbound traffic coming over from Bangor. There's westbound delay as well as only one lane's open, and they're still trying to get the lights working at that intersection. Other slowdowns include I 15 delays between uh, about 100 and Bangor Highway and 114th South. Some stop and go near 53rd South and Murray. And traffic coming into downtown on I-15 now uh, kind of bogging down as everything comes together near 1300 South. Michelle? Well, we're still seeing good speeds, I-15 in the Weber area. I'm starting to see some slowdowns, though, as you head further south. This is going through Rose Park. Those will ease by about 1,000 north. If you're on Legacy or I-215, that's still running at good speeds. Heather? We still have delays coming out of Harvest Hills or Saratoga Springs, either trying to get over to I-15 or heading north on Redwood Road, getting into the the Salt Lake Valley. That's your worst delays right now in Utah County. If you're over in Park City, things are easing up a little bit on SR 248, but you still have some congestion trying to get from US 40 toward the high school. Escape the winter blues for blue skies and sunshine in Beatty, Nevada. Experience Death Valley National Park, Canyon and Desert Trails for off-road hiking and biking, ghost towns and more. BeattyNevada.org. Heather Kelly in the KSL Traffic Center. 47 for a high today and right now it's freezing. 32 degrees downtown. KSL FM Midvale. KSL Salt Lake City. From the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. This is KSL News Radio. Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. 
Good morning, KSL News Time is 8 o'clock. This is Utah's Morning News. I'm Tim Hughes, Amanda Dixon with the morning off. Our top story this hour, the Republican presidential primary is down to the wire. Today, many analysts say, could be the last gasp for South Carolina's Nikki Haley. This is a choice between do you want more of the same or do you want something new? Our live team coverage, Utah Super Tuesday Caucus begins with KSL News Radio's Becky Bruce at the elections desk. Becky? Tim, the two main Republican candidates left standing have been hitting their messages hard in the 15 states that are voting today. Go out and vote. Maybe we should say the reason that America keeps losing is because of Donald Trump. By the time today is all said and done, it is largely expected that the stage will be set for a rematch between President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump in November. Here in Utah, Democrats will cast ballots, but Republicans have opted for a caucus, one they've spent over $100,000 to advertise so far. Our live team coverage continues with KSL News Radio's Amy Kobabe. The money is worth it to bring people out to debate and vote, according to Republican Party Chair Robert Axon. He says tonight will be a chance for people to debate with their neighbors about issues that matter to them. The vote will be in the form of a presidential preference poll. The results will then inform national delegates for when they attend the upcoming convention. We have all of the locations, by the way, and the links to websites for all party caucuses listed on our website at kslnewsradio.com. Super Tuesday, also our top national story now. Analysts say that former President Donald Trump is on the verge of clinching the Republican nomination for a third time. Today's primaries come after the Supreme Court unanimously ruled that individual states cannot ban Trump from the presidential ballot. Courts in three states, Colorado, Maine, and Illinois, had ruled Trump should be banned because of his actions surrounding the January 6th riot, citing the 14th Amendment, which says no one who has taken an oath to support the Constitution and then engaged in insurrection can hold public office afterwards. That's ABC's Ike Jachi reporting. Speaking of former President Donald Trump, he suggests the Republican Party is ridding itself of uh, people like Senator Mitt Romney and his niece, the former Republican National Committee chairwoman, Ronna McDaniel. He claimed at a campaign rally this weekend that his Make America Great Again movement now represents a majority of the GOP, saying we're getting rid of the Romneys of the world. Utah Attorney General Sean Reyes is urging the Supreme Court to limit access to an abortion bill, a pill. KSL News Radio's Peter Johnston is live with the details. Peter? Tim, this is just the latest Supreme Court case that could make abortion drugs the decision of states and not the federal government. A previous ruling from last year allowed the pills to be still be sold. But Utah Attorney General Sean Reyes has added his name to a brief against the pill. He's joined by 21 other attorneys general saying the Food and Drug Administration overstepped its bounds by making the pill available nationwide and that it has become a constitutional issue. The U.S. Justice Department said in their own court filing that a move against abortion drugs would open the door for more of a flood of lawsuits anytime the FDA approves medication for body parts like the heart. Oral arguments in this case begin on March 26th. Reporting live from the Attorney General's office at the state capitol, Peter Johnston, KSL News Radio. Another form of birth control is getting the green light. The maker of the O pill says the birth control pill will become available over the counter nationwide later this month after the FDA declared it safe and effective last summer. O pill is a progestin only birth control and it works in several ways to prevent pregnancy. One of the ways is that it thickens the lining in the cervix. The other way is that it stops ovulation. So, you know, there, there's it's working in multiple ways to prevent pregnancy. And when taken consistently, progestin-only birth control, like other forms of oral birth control, is kind of in the high 90s uh, percent effective. So 98 percent think when you take it at the same time every day. That's ABC's Sony Salzman, uh, who tells us how the pill works. First look, traffic, and he's back in the traffic center. Well, Tim, they're still trying to clean up the crash at 5400 South, 3200 West. Still only have one westbound lane open, and the traffic lights are still flashing at the intersection, so it looks like they're directing traffic uh, rather than uh, letting people just drive through it. But that's the big delay on the city streets. We've got slowdowns on I-15, though, in Draper and in South Salt Lake, and we haven't really had any coming from Ogden to downtown so far. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. We're getting new details in a massive cyber attack that hit the nation's largest health insurer. Experts say it appears that United Health Group may have paid the hackers a $22 million ransom. 
Cybersecurity expert Scott Spiro says that might be the easiest solution, but it also sets up a vicious cycle. It's like uh, training a dog. You know, the dog does something and it gets a treat and just does it again. United Health, by the way, has not confirmed that payment. It was first reported by Reuters and Wired. A former clinic worker is being charged with tax evasion and public assistance fraud after police say she stole $13 million from Medicaid. Lillian Smiskey is accused of submitting more than 500 fraudulent Medicaid claims over the span of three years in Mount Pleasant. And a closed elementary school in Ogden is now opening its doors for entrepreneurs. KSL News Radio's Michael Commit joins me live with that story. Michael? Tim, James Madison Elementary will become the site of a new kitchen incubator program. I think a training center for food service startups. Now, businesses which make the wait list will have access to the school's kitchen equipment along with training and support. O-Town Kitchen will be serving as the anchor for the program, and owner Isaac Farley tells the Standard Examiner it's meant to be an educational program. Farley would also like to source raw products from local farmers and local retail as well. For now, if you're interested in joining the waitlist for this program, then you can check out the O-Town Kitchen's website. Reporting live in North Salt Lake, Michael Commit, KSL News Radio. More than 500 earthquakes have hit Milford in the last two weeks. The earthquakes are being caused by drilling into the earth for geothermal energy. Catherine Whitten, a research scientist from the University of Utah Seismograph Station, says this is to be expected. This is just part of developing the geothermal resource. It, it generates these really small earthquakes. Uh, people don't feel them at the surface and there are measures in place to ensure that they stay small. All of the earthquakes have been relatively small at a 2.7 magnitude or below and Whitten says there's nothing to worry about. They aren't expected to get any bigger. Heather Peterson, KSL News Radio. That's a little relief this morning. Those clouds doing more than just blocking the sun. We've got snow falling now. I-80 in the Kimball Junction area there in Summit County. We'll check your drive next. Utah's Super Tuesday Caucus. Democrats, Republicans, here in the state of Utah, everybody can be part of the process. Get action steps for you to caucus tonight, today at 135, with inside sources on KSL News Radio. I like daffodils, tulips, the big dinner plate dahlias. I loved being in the garden, but I wasn't going to be able to because I couldn't not only walk, but I couldn't really stand on my foot without being in pain. It was excruciating. So my husband said, let's go to the Good Feet store. For over 20 years, we've helped people like Terry live the life they love without letting their feet get in the way. This nice young man said, I think I can help you. He got the arch support and I was fitted. And I kept walking back and forth across the store and I looked at my husband and burst into tears because it was the first time in a year that I have not had any pain in my foot. I have had no pain since the day I bought him. Now I can do whatever I want. There isn't any place on my property that doesn't have flowers blooming 365 days a year. I still can't believe it. My name is Terry and that's my Good Feet story. See what we can do for you with a free personalized arch support fitting at the Good Feet Store. Stop by the Good Feet Store in Farmington, Riverton, or Sandy for a free fitting. Call 1 800 New Feet or visit goodfeet.com. You're the gatekeeper of green, the master of mowing, the wizard of watering schedules. When it comes to your lawn, power moves are the only moves you make. That's why you use IFA's 4 Plus Lawn Care Program. With nutrients blended for greener, healthier turf in our local soil. IFA's 4 Plus Lawn Care Program. It's the ultimate lawn owner power move. They say it takes 10,000 hours to become an expert. You may not have that kind of time for weatherization, energy efficiency, and appliance rebates, but we do. Dominion Energy's Thermwise program has experts who know where and how to save money. They help homeowners and businesses find simple ways to conserve natural gas and rebates through upgrades that may help to save even more. We put our energy into helping you conserve it so you can spend your 10,000 hours becoming an expert in what matters to you. Start with a home energy plan at thermwise.com. News this hour brought to you in part by Dominion Energy's Thermwise program. Their experts help you save money. Start now at thermwise.com. KSL News Time 809, traffic and weather together, brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. For a while there, Andy, I thought that white truck that was in the intersection there in Taylorsville was a, a police vehicle. <laughs> now I see it's part of the accident. Yeah, I thought the same thing, that they were just trying to block off traffic for people. But nope, it was blocking traffic by itself. Now it's up on a tow truck. 
Uh, 5400 South, 3200 West, been kind of a headache in an area that doesn't normally see this kind of a delay. I-15 backups continue in Bluffdale and then some between 21st South and 6th South downtown. Michelle? Still looking quiet on I-15 in Weber and Davis County, looking at some slowdowns. So it's SR 193 just west of I-15. Heather? Snow is falling in the higher elevations now. You're going to see quite a bit of snow falling up through Summit County, especially on I-80 around the Park City area. But snow is also falling in Provo Canyon in Utah County, and it is sticking to the roadways there. We've already had a report of an accident right near the turnoff to Alpine Scenic Highway. That'll take you up to Sundance. Down in Utah, County, the valley itself, the roads are dry on I-15, but you've got a lot of delays trying to get on 2100 North heading east between Redwood Road and I-15. Get Mr. Max Performance Missionary Package includes one performance suit, foreign collar, stretch shirts, three ties, one mission belt, one pair of Echo or Johnston and Murphy shoes, just $595. Heather Kelly in the KSL Traffic Center. Courtesy of small, low-pressure systems passing by to the north, we'll keep it mostly cloudy today, high of 47. Overnight, cloudy skies, 35 the low. 51 for tomorrow afternoon, mostly cloudy, slight chance for a shower, maybe a better chance for a rain-snow shower on Thursday. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. Finally, some movement in those temperatures out there. It's warmed up a little bit now in downtown Salt Lake City, 34 degrees. Debbie Dujanovic will join me coming up here. It's uh, Super Tuesday, and coverage, of course, will continue throughout the day today. We've told you that we'll have wall-to-wall -wall coverage between 5 and 9, which will be an hour after everything winds down tonight. But uh, I know they're going to be talking about it on Dave and Dujanovic, so we'll give you a little preview in just a minute. You'll always find us streaming live at kslnewsradio.com and on the app for KSL News Radio, Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile, and the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time, there's Granger, offering professional grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, clickgranger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Hey everyone, it's Joe Montana. Spreading the word about pneumococcal pneumonia, a potentially serious bacterial lung disease that can be life-threatening. If you're 65 or older like me, you're at increased risk. So, what's the game plan? A strong defense. Pneumococcal pneumonia can strike at any time in any season, so you shouldn't wait to help protect yourself. Talk to your doctor or pharmacist about vaccination today and learn more at knownemonia.com. That's K-N-O-W pneumonia.com. Sponsored by Pfizer. Strike gold every day with Golden Rewards at Golden West Credit Union. Introducing the new Golden West Loyalty Program. Every member can enjoy the gold account, a free savings account with an impressive 6% annual percentage yield. You can fund your gold account in four ways. Opt in to round up your debit card purchases to the nearest dollar with Roundup Rewards. The extra change will automatically be deposited into your gold account. To add even more funds, your Visa Signature, Platinum Rebate, and Visa Rewards Cashback will be deposited directly into your high-yield gold account. The year-end Golden Bonus Dividend will be deposited into your gold account to earn even higher dividends. And take advantage of special promotional offers at Golden West and we will deposit the cash reward, earning you even more. Your gold account savings will add up fast. Secure your free gold account at Golden West Credit Union today or online at gwcu.org. Member NCUA. We'll take care of you. KSL News Time, 815. So three things you need to know this hour. First, a new planning proposal would alter zoning barriers and increase historical eligibility to help preserve and reuse more historic buildings in Salt Lake City. I'm KSL News Radio's Alessandra Gert. Second, more than 500 small earthquakes have been reported near Milford in the past couple of weeks, and scientists say they're being caused by geothermal energy production and uh, no cause for concern. Third, it's traffic and weather together. And right now, traffic is still struggling through the intersection at 5400 South, 3200 West. We've got slowdowns on I-15 that's increasing downtown on northbound lanes approaching 600 South. But uh, also have some heavy stretches in Murray and in Bluffdale as well to deal with. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. Mostly cloudy skies today with a high of 47. I'm Matt Johnson. Warmed up a bit. 34 now in Salt Lake City with our top national stories. 
ABC News. I'm Sherry Preston. It's Super Tuesday, the biggest day of the presidential nominating contest. Go out and vote. President Trump making his final pitch at Mar-a-Lago as people in more than a dozen states head to the polls. Both Trump and Nikki Haley on the ballot for the Republicans. Here's ABC National Correspondent Stephen Portnoy. Republicans will vote in 15 states, from Maine in the east to Alaska in the west. California and Texas are the two largest contests. The rules vary by state. In some, including California, the winner with more than 50 percent of the vote takes all of the state's delegates. In others, delegates are assigned proportionally or by congressional district. Donald Trump is the clear favorite, but Nikki Haley still hopes to improve her delegate count today. The latest round of Gaza ceasefire talks are now ended. We've been here before, and again, little or no progress. While Hamas met with mediators in Cairo, Israel did not send representatives, reportedly because it wanted to see a list of all hostages still alive beforehand. Senior Hamas officials say this would not be possible without a ceasefire because the hostages were scattered across the war zone. The Cairo talks have been billed as a final hurdle to reach a 40-day truce. Tom Rivers, ABC News, at the Foreign Desk. A massive industrial fire at a vaping distribution company outside Detroit last night. Clinton Township Fire Chief Tim Duncan says butane tanks were exploding, forcing him to pull his crews back. We're basically dodging all these things going through the air. We did have one of them that ended up... uh, uh, go almost going through the window of one of our apparatus last night. It did injure one of our firefighters. Um, fortunately, he came through it okay. A 19-year-old student about a quarter mile away was killed by some of that flying debris. Following those atmospheric rivers and other recent winter storms, AccuWeather says no widespread drought is expected in California for at least another two years. Consumer Financial Protection Bureau finalizing a deal to make $8 the most a credit card company can charge you for being late with the payment. This is ABC News. It is uh, Super Tuesday. I mentioned we've got coverage all day long. David Dujanovic is going to jump right into this. Uh, I take it you're not a fan of the caucus. Well, I would say that the presidential uh, preference poll that Republicans are holding tonight, uh, of course, you register at 6 o'clock, then the actual meetings start at 7 at 2,500 different locations, are a little loosey-goosey when it comes to security, which is ironic given the cries for more secure elections. How so? Um, well, first of all, you show up, um, and you can also bring an absentee ballot with you. So if somebody in your neighborhood wants to send an absentee ballot, all they got to do is print it off, photocopy the front and back of their driver license, sign the back of an envelope, and they send it with the person that they've designated as their their proxy to deliver uh, these votes but to I the think caucus that's, tonight. It's limited to three, is it not? I'm not sure what the limit is. We can find yeah. out today. We're going to have a live conversation with Robert Axum, who uh, is in, in charge of the Republican Party. Um, but the other thing is, is that um, even, you know, KSL and Night host Taylor Morgan, he's over one of these tonight. He's like one of the, the bosses yeah, over yeah. this. And he said, he said, I'll admit it. This is really loose. He said, this is a relic. We're operating as though we're in the 19th century, where uh, the precincts uh, are going to be tallying the votes there as best they can, but it's all done by paper. Um, And he said in an era of election security, even this one throws him off. So each of the parties can set up uh, the process however they want. This This is not... Um, this is done by the parties. So there's there's some, you know, there's some, I think there's some issues there with how yeah. the Republicans are handling this. But if, if that's where they're comfortable, how they're comfortable doing it, so be it. Uh, but I think it's worth talking about. Yeah. In a, in a time where we're crying for more election security. Uh, yeah, this this one's, you know, like bring your quill and your pen, you know, in the in your ink. <laughs> oh, it's not bring that bad. Bring your quill pen. It's yeah. not that bad. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure you're aware there's a lot of people who wish we would go back to paper ballots and showing an ID to vote. Uh, they consider that why? to be among the safest. Ones. I don't know why. I, 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 I just, I, I don't hear, I don't understand that argument, but we can certainly talk about it more today, and we will today on the Dave and Dijanovic show. I mean, should we go back to a time when we're filling out things on pen, with pen and paper? I Tim, I'm hard-pressed to figure out why. All right. Uh, It will make for a spirited conversation coming up today. As always, Dave and Dujanovic, 9 to noon. This portion of Utah's Morning News is brought to you by Revere Health. It's 819, and that means time for us to get the latest on your drive. It's brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. 
Here's Andy Farnsworth. Heavy traffic on I-15, still in the uh, areas of Bangor Highway, 53rd South and 33rd South as you come into downtown. 201, a little bit heavy between Bangor and 30 and uh, uh, 215, I should say. And the crash cleanup and uh, traffic light repair is still going on at 5400 South, 3200 West. So there's still delay at that intersection for east and westbound traffic. Michelle? Well, I-15 headed south looking good until you get to about 2300 North, and you're going to see those slowdowns to about 600 North, making your way into downtown. For drivers that are trying to use uh, Legacy I-215, that's looking good. A little bit of slowing still left over. SR 193 in Clearfield. Heather? Well, the snow is the story again this morning, especially if you're trying to get in and around Park City area and also through Provo Canyon. It is starting to stick to the roadways. That is slowing everybody down. We also have a report of a crash in Provo Canyon. That's US 189 right at the turnoff that'll take you into Sundance and a lot of snow there on the roads. The good news is things are still dry down in Utah Valley. No problems on I-15 either direction, but you're still pretty heavy on 2100 North trying to head east to I-15. Big O Tires is your one-stop shop for tires and service. Now through March 17th, buy three, get one free on select sets of tires. Big O Tires, the team you trust. Heather Kelly in the KSL Traffic Center. KSL 7-day forecast keeps the clouds around for the next few days. Mostly cloudy today, 47. 51 tomorrow, mostly cloudy. Slight chance for an isolated shower. Better chance for scattered rain snow showers on Thursday, 45 the high. We drop down to 42, partly cloudy on Friday. Sunny on Saturday, 50 degrees, 54. We're rebounding, partly cloudy on Sunday. And then it's 57 with a mix of sun and clouds on Monday. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. Cloudy downtown this hour and uh, 34 degrees on the heels of my conversation with uh, Debbie just a moment ago. I just want to remind you about our uh, Super Tuesday coverage. We'll have it throughout the day today. Boyd will have uh, 1.30 to 2 o'clock dedicated to Super Tuesday for sure, although my guess is he'll talk even more than that uh, on the Inside Sources program. Then Boyd will join Jeff Kaplan this afternoon uh, for continuing wall-to-wall coverage between 5 o'clock and 9 o'clock tonight. And uh, we will have uh, results. Well, I don't know whether we'll get results. Everything will wrap up, I'm, I'm guessing, around 8 o'clock tonight. So if we're on the air till 9, we may know something. But look forward to the coverage here on KSL News Radio. Not just Jeff and Boyd, but uh, Mara Carabello will also be joining in the conversation. The best coverage of Super Tuesday coming up here on KSL, where the news time is 8.23. Revere Health is dedicated to making healthcare easier and more accessible by offering the latest technologies to improve the patient experience. We offer convenient telehealth appointments so you can receive care from the comfort of your own home. We also offer an online patient portal called Follow My Health that enables you to manage your healthcare online. When you download the Follow My Health app, you can exchange direct messages with your doctor, view lab and test results as soon as they are available, renew prescriptions, and review upcoming appointments. If you're ready to schedule your annual physical for 2024, we've made that easier too. Revere Health now offers the ability to schedule appointments online for primary care and select specialties. Visit our website at reverehealth.com to learn more or to schedule your next appointment online. Through these convenient solutions, Revere Health demonstrates its commitment to quality, patient-centric care every day. Revere Health, your partner in health, your partner for life. Hi friends, Dan the Laptop Man here from PC Laptops. I get a lot of emails from people all the time. Here's one. Dear Dan, I hear your talk about a lifetime service guarantee. Free? Really? Please help me avoid all your fine print and be honest about what free means. You understand that we should be very wary of a free offer signed skeptical. Hi, skeptical. I remember 22 years ago when we started PC laptops and our lifetime service guarantee, people thought it was too good to be true. Well, you know, after a decade, people started believing me a little bit. But you know, it's been 22 years of having the privilege to serve our friends and neighbors like you. Our lifetime service guarantee has become the most trusted warranty in the industry. You can get a brand new PC Laptops desktop computer and they start at only $29 a month. Check us out at PCLaptops.com. That's PCLaptops.com. Here's to seeing you soon, Skeptical. Dave and Eugenific. It's Super Tuesday and today I get to participate in my first presidential preference poll. 
One thing that surprises me is the voting itself. With all the concerns in election security, voting today will be a little medieval. I'll tell you why today on Dave and Dugenovic. Watching Utah's Money is brought to you by Trajan Wealth, your trusted local fiduciary advisors, TrajanWealth.com. Jeff Bezos has reclaimed the title of the richest person on earth, dethroning Elon Musk. The Bloomberg Billionaires Index says last year Bezos gained $23 billion while Musk lost $31 billion. Whole Foods is launching what they call a quick shop format to extend their services to urban neighborhoods. It's called the Whole Foods Market Daily Shop, and each shop will be smaller but include basically everything a standard Whole Foods has. This venture will start in New York City. And some former Twitter executives, speaking of Elon Musk, are suing him, saying they are entitled to more than $128 million bucks in unpaid severance. They say they were fired without reason when Musk acquired Twitter back in 2022. Musk and his team haven't yet responded to that lawsuit. Your money at this moment, uh, not off to a good start today after a down close yesterday. We're uh, down another half a percent on the Dow. It's down 193. Some of that uh, they're telling us this morning and really more of the loss on the NASDAQ, which is now down 257, more than one and a half percent, is because of what we were telling you earlier about uh, Apple's iPhone sales slumping in China by 24 percent. That's impacting stock today. And uh, there's two stocks, really, that push this index, the uh, uh, NASDAQ, in one direction or another. One is Apple. The other is Intel. And they're both down this hour. The S&P 500 also down by 41 points. That's more than three-quarters of a percent. Scattered slowing now. Northbound I-15 from Draper all the way into downtown. We'll check your traffic and weather together in two minutes. Transform your old, outdated kitchen with Half Price Granite. For a limited time, Half Price Granite is offering special pricing, starting at $25 per square foot installed. That's lower than most big box stores. These prices are some of the lowest around. Granite, quartz, marble, and quartzite, all starting at $25 per square foot installed. Call 801-486-1700 or visit halfpricegranite.com. Half Price Granite, affordable luxury. My savings are gone. Okay, where were they last? Here, right before I spent them on that vacation to Aruba. Weird. Not weird. Not saving now means no money later. For free ways to save, go to feedthepig.org. This message brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. A happy place comes in many colors. Whatever your color, bring happiness home with Serta Pro Painters and make your happy place your home. Serta Pro Painters, that's painting happy. During our spring sales event, special offers are available through April 30th. Schedule your home painting project today and bring happiness home. Each Serta Pro Painters business is independently owned and operated. Contractor license and registration information is available at CertaPro.com. It already feels like home. The Cougars are fighting for their best chance in the Big Dance. BYU's displayed its resiliency throughout this campaign. Wow. The Big 12 tournament is days away, and then it's the NCAA tournament. This Wednesday, it's BYU, Iowa State. Free game is at 6 and tip off at 7 on Utah's legacy home for the Cougars. KSL News Radio. 829 traffic and weather together, brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app, where you save up to 20 cents a gallon. How are we looking, Andy? Well, Tim, they're getting closer to reopening the intersection fully at 5400 South, 3200 West. It looks like the traffic lights are working properly again, but uh, with crews still on the scene, there's still some lane restrictions going through the intersection. I-15, back to the full speed limit now until you get into downtown where traffic's a little bit slow, uh, where 201 and I-80 merge onto I-15 just before 600 South. Michelle? Well, I-15 headed southbound from Ogden, running at posted speeds until you get to about 2300 North. It's going to slow down to about 1000 North, then you're seeing good speeds again once you're heading into Salt Lake City. Heather? Our worst delays in Utah County are on 2100 North. This is eastbound between Redwood Road and 2300 West, but you also have significant delays northbound on 2300 West, trying to get to 2100 North. And then in the back country, we've got a lot of snow falling right now. It's affecting drivers on I-80 coming over the summit, trying to get into Park City, as well as in Provo Canyon. Snow is sticking to the roadway there, and we've already had some accidents both directions approaching the Sundance Resort turnoff. 
When you choose Performance Automotive in Bountiful, you're choosing exceptional service from four dealers. Performance Ford Lincoln, Performance Honda, Performance Toyota, and Truck Country. See PerformanceBountiful.com. Heather Kelly in the KSL Traffic Center. 47 degrees for a high later. They keep telling us we're going to get some sunshine, although we haven't seen it yet. And tomorrow we actually warm into the lower 50s for highs with a 30% chance of showers. But right now, 34 degrees in Salt Lake City. You're listening to Utah's Morning News with Tim Hughes and Amanda Dixon on KSL News Radio, 102.7 FM and 1160 AM. Good morning. KSL News Time is 8:30, and our top story this half hour: a Davis County teen is back with his family after police say he was taken by an adult and sent a secret signal for help. We get the story from KSL News Radio's Peter Johnston. Police found the missing 14-year-old boy in a West Bountiful hotel room with four adult men on Sunday. The way officers knew something was wrong was that the teen had changed his voicemail. He and his family had agreed to use that as a red flag, and later he shared his location. The Davis County Sheriff's Office tells KSL TV they questioned all four adult men and let three go. The last was a 36-year-old man from California who says he met the boy online and intended to take him back to his home state. He's in jail. Police say this is an important reminder that families should prepare safety signals just in case. Peter Johnston, KSL News Radio. The two victims uh, have been identified after that shooting at Varick's Imaging Headquarters, and their CEO says it's a sad day for the company. We felt that it was critical that the business stay open to allow employees to come together, avoid isolation, lean on one another. That's their CEO, Sonny Sanyal. On-site counseling will be available for other employees, and police believe the shooter turned the gun on himself. A Utah woman is suing Salt Lake County along with several people associated with the Salt Lake County Metro Jail over what she claims was the preventable death of her late husband. Amy Baker's lawsuit claims her six foot two husband Leland Cropper weighed just 128 pounds when he was booked two years ago on suspicion of driving without valid registration, driving on a suspended or revoked license, and possession of drug paraphernalia, all misdemeanors. Over the course of five days, the suit claims he lost more than 15 pounds and was reporting symptoms including nausea, pain, and vomiting. The lawsuit claims his death could have been prevented if jail officials had sought more medical care for him. Baker is asking for damages to be determined by a jury. Becky Bruce, KSL News Radio. KSL's top national stories this hour. Voters in Colorado casting ballots less than 24 hours after the Supreme Court ruled that former President Donald Trump must remain on the ballot. The justices unanimously overruled the state Supreme Court decision that disqualified him for engaging in the January 6th insurrection. ABC News legal analyst uh, Kate Shaw says the speed of the high court's decision could be a precedent when it takes up it, his immunity trial. It was about three and a half weeks between the argument in the Colorado case and the decision we got yesterday. So if the court wants to, it could move just as quickly, maybe faster in the immunity case, which I think has actually a simpler set of legal issues. The trial now is set for late April. Today is Super Tuesday. 800 delegate spots will be decided from 15 states and one territory. KSL at night's Mara Carabello says Utah has not always been a part of Super Tuesday. A decade ago, we had all the western states. The west coast states are going to band together, and all the media attention is going to be on Nevada, New Mexico, Utah, Colorado, Wyoming. Utah participated in Super Tuesday in 2008 and 2020. Six bills surrounding the federal budget went through committee on Capitol Hill, and Congresswoman Celeste Malloy sat down with KSL to discuss how they will benefit the state. One of the things I worked really hard on was to get some uh, funding in there for some of these rural infrastructure projects, like culinary water systems in Marysville and Lyman and Monroe. These and other towns just don't have the tax base they need to update their water systems. The dates have been set for state and congressional debates here in Utah. Things kick off with the gubernatorial debate on September 23rd at Salt Lake Community College. Senate and several House candidates will debate at Utah State coming up in October. And Nicholas Rossi will be back in court today. He's facing several charges after faking his death and fleeing the country to avoid rape charges. He still insists he's not Rossi and has been mistakenly extradited. First look traffic, back to Andy Farnsworth. 
And right now, uh, 3200 West, 5400 South. Westbound still has a lane blocked, and southbound and northbound still blocked on the north side of the intersection. I-15 seeing some snow starting to fall and some fall uh, snow falling on the west side around uh, Bangor Highway. Uh, but so far, that hasn't been the kind that sticks to the road yet. It has been in Provo Canyon, though. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. Utah Clean Energy is working with several cities to prepare for the influx of electric vehicles. We get that story from KSL News Radio's John Brinkerhoff. According to Kelby Gopal with Utah Clean Energy, EV ready ordinances require that a certain percentage of parking spots in multifamily buildings be equipped with the right infrastructure to install EV chargers. Salt Lake City last year passed an EV readiness ordinance that requires 20% of parking spaces in new multifamily housing to be EV ready. So that was really a great step for Salt Lake City and created, I think, a lot of momentum and interest among other local governments who want to do the same thing. She says there are estimates that by 2030, 50% of new car sales will be electric vehicles, which will mean greater demand for places to charge all those EVs. Don Brinkerhoff, KSL News Radio. Park City leaders are looking for ways to help its workforce affordable housing in town, according to the Salt Lake Tribune. It's the only Utah city with a bigger workforce than the number of residents, and Zillow reports the median rent there is over four grand a month. The city council is now looking at building more dorm-style housing to accommodate the thousands of people who commute into work every day. Salt Lake City leaders trying to protect and reuse the city's historic buildings. This proposal, initiated by Salt Lake City Mayor Aaron Mendenhall, would alter some zoning barriers and change building requirements to allow more historic buildings to be preserved and used rather than demolished. Deputy Planning Director with the Salt Lake Planning Commission, Michaela Oakday, says one of these changes would help create more residential buildings. The current process is really limited the process with the landmark structures right now, it pretty much just allows non-residential uses. The proposal was passed unanimously by the Planning Commission and will be heard by the Salt Lake City Council this week. Alessandra Gurr, KSL News Radio. And the parents of an eight-year-old boy who died after falling off a playground slide are suing the school district for $90,000. Dallin Cunningham died last year at a uh, Tooele Elementary School. His parents say the school was negligent for allowing a slide on the playground. We told you about the snow falling up in uh, Summit County. It's now falling in Provo Canyon as well. But up there in Summit County, Heather was saying last time we checked in that it was starting to stick to the roads up there. So we'll get another peek at traffic and weather together next. A legacy of news and information going back generations. I'll have the radio on. I learned that from my mom. She's listened to KSL her whole life, and I grew up listening to KSL radio, too. I really enjoy listening in the morning. We have you covered at KSL News Radio. Do you hear that? If you're like many people, that's the sound of your money. Just lying there in a checking or savings account doing nothing when it could be out there earning more money for you. But at America First Credit Union, we can give your money a wake up call. What? What's that? Rise and shine, Bucky. We can get your money working in a high yield certificate account, earning you a much better return than traditional checking and savings. Up and at him, buddy. We gotta go. Huh? Where are we going? To America First. You'll love it there. They're going to help you do so much awesome stuff. Mm. All right, all right, I'm coming. So get your money working with a high-yield certificate from America First. Head to AmericaFirst.com today to check out the latest amazing rates. Subject to membership, eligibility, terms, conditions, and change. Federally insured by NCUA. Hi, I'm Henry Winkler. My eyes are very important to me. My eyes connect me with everything I love. I loved my late father-in-law dearly. He always lit up a room, but his vision dimmed with age. He had age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. And since partnering with Apellus, I've learned there's an advanced form of dry AMD called geographic atrophy, or GA. His struggle with vision loss made me want to help others know about GA's warning signs. For some, colors appear dull or washed out. For others, hazy or blurred vision make it hard to see details, like fine print on price tags. Many have trouble seeing in the dark, making driving at night difficult. GA gets worse over time and cannot be reversed. If you think you have GA, don't wait. Treatments are available. Ask a retina specialist about FDA-approved treatments for GA and go to gawontwait.com. 
Super Tuesday coverage, of course, going on uh, throughout the day today, right through 9 o'clock this evening. I just want to remind everybody that we've got all the locations and links to the websites for all party caucuses listed on our website. Sort of a one-stop shop if you uh, need info today. Just go to kslnewsradio.com and I encourage you to be back here tomorrow morning at 5 o'clock as we wrap up Super Tuesday with what should be a stupendous Wednesday. It's 839. Time for a look at traffic and weather together. Again, brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. Where are you going to start, Andy? Well, let's start with uh, North 15, where traffic is still running a little bit slow around the Bangor exit and 3300 south. If you're in either of those two areas right now, you may have to slow down a little bit if you're not in the HOV lane. And then uh, over on 8400 West in Magna, we've got some delays going up towards 201. Backups on the 21st South Freeway eastbound just before you reach Bangor Highway. Michelle? I-15 still looking good from Ogden to Salt Lake. Just a little bit of slowing as you're going through the Rose Park area. For drivers that are on Highway 89 around Harrison Boulevard, still some slowdowns there as well. Heather? Well, the crash in Provo Canyon eastbound US 189 just cleared 30 seconds ago. They had been blocking the left lane and shoulder. So traffic had been only been getting by on the right lane. It's going to take a little bit of time for those delays to clear out. And that's going to be as you approach the Sundance Resort turnoff. In Utah County itself, in the valley, you still have dry road conditions on I-15, both directions between Point of the Mountain and Spanish Fork, and still a little bit of delay left over on 2100 North eastbound trying to get to I-15. For a limited time, open a 12-month certificate from Cypress Credit Union and get 5.2% APY. Learn more at any branch or visit cypresscu.com. Heather Kelly in the KSL Traffic Center. We'll keep it mostly cloudy for this afternoon, high of 47 degrees. Overnight, we'll dip off to 35, which really isn't that cold for this time of year. Mostly cloudy tomorrow, high of 51, and a slight chance for an isolated shower. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. 34 degrees in Salt Lake City. I see that uh, Greg Scordis, our legal analyst, is going to be joining me here in just a minute. We've been telling you about this Utah woman that is suing Salt Lake County, uh, along with several people at the Salt Lake County Metro Jail, over claims that her husband's death was preventable while he was in custody there. Uh, we'll see what uh, Greg thinks of this uh, court case coming up in just a minute here on KSL News Radio, streaming live at KSLNewsRadio.com. Always remember to look for us on the app for KSL News Radio, where Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. Hi, this is Doug Wright with yet another great experiment you can try right there at home. I want you to take four bags of water softener salt, lift three of the bags with one hand, good luck on that, and one bag with your other hand. Now, if you're like most people, you'll probably find that three bags of salt weigh about three times as much as one bag of salt. And that's an important thing to keep in mind when you're shopping for a water softener. You see, Connecticut of Utah, an authorized Connecticut dealer, their water softeners are so well designed, they use only only one bag of salt for every three that other water softeners use. Now, I can't speak for you, but I'm not a fan of lower back pain. And as our little experiment has hopefully demonstrated, carrying that one bag of salt, it's a lot easier on your back than carrying three. That's just one of the many reasons you should look into water softeners from Connecticut of Utah, an authorized Connecticut dealer. To learn more, call Connecticut of Utah, 801-576-8600, or go to SoftwaterUtah.com. I'm Jason Walton, candidate for U.S. Senate. I'm recording from the Tucson sector of our southern border, and nobody's here. Our government should defend our territory. But President Biden, Mitch McConnell, and career politicians are funding war in other countries while the cartels are waging unchecked war here on American soil. I'm standing up to build the wall, end catch and release, and secure the border. Stand with me. I'm Jason Walton, and I approve this message. Paid for by friends of Jason Walton for Senate. I give my all to my family. I give my best to my job. I give my time to my community. And to myself, I'm giving permission to drive the way I've always wanted. In luxury, in style, today, not someday. I'm headed to Jerry Signer Cadillac to choose from an entire line of sleek crossovers in stock and the area's largest selection of certified pre-owned vehicles. I've earned a Cadillac. If you have two, then come in today to experience the Signer difference. KSL News Time 845. The three things you need to know this hour. First, a missing Davis County teen is back safe with his family after he sent a secret sign for help. Police accuse an adult of intending to bring that boy to California and harm him. 
From KSL News Radio's Peter Johnston. Second, Utah Attorney General Sean Reyes is pushing the Supreme Court to limit access to an abortion pill. Third, let's check the drive with traffic and weather together. How about that, Andy? It's clear. Yeah, they finally cleared the crash at 3200 West, 5400 South. Everything's open. Now we're just waiting on some slowing on 201 to clear out between 56 West and Bangor Highway and some backups on I-15 in Bluffdale to clear. Plus, you've got snowy and wet conditions now in the higher elevations and canyons. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. Lots of clouds for the next few days and slight rain and snow chances. I'm Matt Johnson. Right now in Salt Lake City with all those clouds still uh, yet to see any sunshine. It's 34 degrees. And time for a look at our top national stories. ABC News. I'm Sherry Preston. President Biden and former President Donald Trump both moving closer to winning their party's nominations during the biggest day of the primary campaign. Super Tuesday elections for both the Democrats and the Republicans being held in 16 states and American Samoa. Ceasefire talks in Egypt ending without a deal. Secretary of State Antony Blinken meeting with his counterpart in Qatar. Israel says Israel needs to get more humanitarian aid into Gaza. Israel has to maximize every possible means, every possible method of getting assistance to people who need it. The United States will continue to strongly support those efforts along with many other countries around the world. But it requires more crossings, it requires more aid getting in, and once that aid is in, it requires making sure it can get to the people who need it. A big industrial fire in suburban Detroit has killed one person. He was about a quarter mile away from the vape production factory that burned, sending butane tanks flying into the air. This is ABC News. All right, let's go in depth here. A Utah woman is suing Salt Lake County, along with several people associated with the Salt Lake County Metro Jail, over what she claims was the preventable death of her late husband. Joining me live to sort all the details out is uh, KSL legal analyst Greg Scordis. When you hear, uh, Greg, that this six foot two man, when he was booked, weighed 128, would that not indicate there was a health concern? Yeah, I mean, and that's really the focus, Tim, of this lawsuit. I've been reading it over for the last little while, and they go through a very, very detailed analysis of his health from the time he was admitted into the jail uh, and t- till the time that he passed away, which by the way, was about five days. So uh, he was he was emaciated and in very, very poor health when he got into the jail and then it continued to deteriorate. The, if, you, if you believe the lawsuit, and I'm just reading the lawsuit, so I don't know whether the allegations are true or not, uh, they, they claim to say that, that he was of bad health when he got in it continued to deteriorate, and they're blaming the jail staff and the medical people there for not uh, responding or taking better care of him while he was there, even with the signs that looked like he was struggling right from the outset. These facts, of course, are going to have to play out in court, obviously, but can we talk for just a second about what the responsibility of the jail is with anybody that comes into their um, uh, jail cells? Yes, and that's a great question. So with all of our correctional institutions, jails and prisons throughout the state, jail staff is required to be uh, to be what we call reasonable. That is to say they have to have medical staff available, they have to have a medical staff uh, on call, and of course the larger jail like this one, which happened to be the Salt Lake County Jail, it's the biggest jail in the, in the state, you would expect to have full-time medical staff, including uh, doctors, nurses, and, and other healthcare workers, there full time, but jails are required to, and and they all they do they really do a very good job of this. Tim, when inmates are booked in, they'll have a medical uh, professional there, uh, sort of monitoring them, almost like a physical, just to see where they are, what medications they need, what medications they're on, and if they need any medical attention. Because a lot of times you arrest somebody after a, an auto accident or a fight or something like that, and so they could have medical issues that are somewhat related but not necessarily part of their criminal case. This man, Leland Cropper, uh, when he was booked, was uh, booked on suspicion of driving without a valid registration, driving on a suspended or revoked license, and possession of drug paraphernalia. Uh, With all the things you just listed that are the responsibility of the jail, we have any indication that some of that took place? Well, it looks like it did. I mean, Again, the, the lawsuit is strictly from the plaintiff's point of view. That is the, the, the widow of, of the deceased. So she goes through a very detailed analysis of all the medical people at the jail, what they did and what they didn't do. And to, to go to the, the beginning of your question, Tim, he was booked on what appeared to be very minor charges, um, charges that 
most of the time wouldn't have even resulted in someone having to stay in the jail, um, driving on a suspended license or revoked license, drug paraphernalia. I mean, those are all low-level misdemeanors. So I, I'm not sure why he was even kept in jail for five days. This is usually one of those book and release kind of things or sort of release on OR, your own recognizance, so that you don't have to post bail. So there are a lot, there's a lot to this case that we don't know. Uh, but certainly from the plaintiff's perspective, filing this lawsuit, it looks very problematic. Mm. All right, Greg, thanks for your analysis. Uh, what we do know about this case right now, KSL legal analyst Greg Scordis joining me on the In-Depth at 15 and 45. It's 849, traffic and weather together, brought to you by Sinclair's DinoPay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. Now that we've cleared that situation in Taylorsville, we can concentrate on some of the freeways here, Andy. And it looks like we've got a crash, too. Eastbound on the 21st South Freeway just before Bangor Highway. This is why we're seeing the slowdowns between 56th West and Bangor. You've also got some wet conditions slowing traffic in both directions between Bluffdale and Bangor Highway now in the south end of Salt Lake County. And then as you come into downtown, still have some heavy traffic, but it's breaking up quickly between 21st South and 600 South Exit. Michelle? Well, again, we're still seeing good speeds for drivers on I-15 coming in from, you know, clear up into even Brigham City all the way down to Salt Lake, looking at good speeds. We're looking at about a KSL travel time, about 34 minutes from Ogden to downtown Salt Lake. A little bit of slowing left over as you're going through the North Salt Lake area. Heather? The delays continue to stack up for people on eastbound I-80 trying to exit at Kimball Junction. It is now backed up on to main flow I-80. The right lane is coming to a stop about half a mile or so before you even get to the exit ramp. And we've got snow falling in the area as well. Roads are very wet, sticking on the city streets, so definitely need to slow down your speeds and use caution. That's pretty much the same story in Provo Canyon. We've already had a crash in Provo Canyon. That was near the Sundance turnoff. But in the valley itself, Utah Valley, you've got dry road conditions on I-15. With IFA's crabgrass preventer plus lawn food, you'll stop those pesky weeds before they even start. It's the ultimate lawn owner power move. Heather Kelly in the KSL Traffic Center. KSL 7A forecast starts out with a high of 47 today with mostly cloudy skies. Keeping the clouds around for tomorrow, a slight chance for an isolated shower, high of 51 degrees. 45, chance for rain snow showers on Thursday, then drying out Friday, partly cloudy, high of 42. Time to rebound with high pressure, Saturday sunny, 50. 54 on Sunday goes to 57, partly cloudy skies on Monday. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. 34 degrees in Salt Lake City and the seven-day forecast brought to you by Performance Automotive Bountiful. Uh, we'll get a look at money news coming up in a minute. Looks like we're in for a down day today. But uh, this headline on Market Watch, we haven't talked a lot about it in the last couple of days, but Bitcoin really has been making a move here. And this headline, Bitcoin surges above $69,000 to a record high as investors sail into untested waters. What that means to the broader market, we'll find out when we check money news next. The other night, my son and I, we made this special trip to Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. This time we happened to go to downtown Salt Lake City at 275 Southwest Temple, and we had a celebratory dinner each and every year. We kind of have a race to see who reads the most books. Ian won. I paid. What an amazing night. First of all, with my son. Second of all, with the incredible food that awaited us at Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. Now, we both happened to go with ribeye. However, Ian went with the ribeye, the big one. And the desserts, the side dishes were simply amazing. Ruth's Chris Steakhouse, downtown Salt Lake City. But of course, I love the location at Hotel Park City as well. It is so beautiful up there right now. And of course, there's still some great skiing. We're kind of on that bridge between winter and springtime. It's the perfect place to have an after-ski gathering. Ruth's Chris Steakhouse, Hotel Park City, downtown Salt Lake City. It is the place for the best dining you have ever had. Join Mike Stevens of Capital Wealth Advisors for Retire Right Radio, Saturdays at 5 a.m. and 9 p.m. That's Retire Right Radio with Mike Stevens, Saturdays at 5 a.m. and 9 p.m. This is Lisa Nichols from Intermountain Health with Your Life, Your Health. March is National Multiple Sclerosis Month, a time to raise awareness about a neurological disease that affects more than 1 million Americans. MS is a chronic disease of the central nervous system. The central nervous system includes the brain and spinal cord. The exact cause of MS is currently unknown. However, it's believed that genetic factors, viruses or infections, and environmental factors may play a role. 
Most people diagnosed with MS are between the ages of 20 and 50. However, MS can also occur in older adults and young children. MS is more common in women than men. Symptoms of MS are often unpredictable, can be inconsistent, and may vary among individuals. They may be mild or severe, depending on the area where the central nervous system is affected. According to neurologists at Intermountain Health, common symptoms include vision changes, fatigue, numbness and tingling, loss of balance, dizziness, stiffness, spasms, tremors, and bladder and bowel problems. Unfortunately, there's no current cure for MS. There are many treatments that can be effective in stabilizing the disease. The sooner you get diagnosed, the sooner you can receive help and your outcome will be better. If someone is diagnosed with it, they'll work with a team of healthcare providers to help manage the disease. It's important for patients to consult with their primary care physician if they have any symptoms of MS. I'm Lisa Nichols with Intermountain Health on KSL News Radio. It's Super Tuesday, and today I get to participate in my first presidential preference poll. One thing that surprises me is the voting itself. With all the concerns in election security, voting today will be a little medieval. I'll tell you why today on Dave and Dugenovic. Watching Utah's Money brought to you by Trajan Wealth, your trusted local fiduciary advisors, TrajanWealth.com. Target's annual revenue dropped for the first time in seven years, and the Wall Street Journal says that less people are splurging on home goods and electronics and instead spending their money on food and other essentials that leaves Target's in a rough place since they, since they get most of their sales from non-food items. Markets are struggling this morning. Uh, after a down day yesterday, we are down another 242 points, six tenths of a percent on the Dow. The S&P is down about nine tenths of a percent. It's off 44 points. But look at the tech stocks. NASDAQ now down 280. That's one and three quarters percent. One more look and a wrap up, hopefully, of this morning drive when we come back. Can we talk about something difficult to discuss? Are you going through a difficult financial time? You have equity in your home, but nobody can help. I'm Jason Erskine with American Home Loans, and we have created the Bridge Loan Program to use your equity.